Morning, welcome to Sewing Street. My name's Debbie Shaw and we are going to be with you for the first time this morning for four hours live. I know, and I've had a big cup of coffee just before we went live as well. Um, so thankfully Delphine's with me this morning. I'll introduce you to her in just a second. And we've got two shows, so 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock are going to be with Delphine. Now, because you've um, joined us nice and bright and early this morning at 8 o'clock, we have a special offer for you. We call it our early bird. And we bring you um, an item and reduce the price for as long as we have the stock or until the end of the day. I think this one's going to be while we have the stock, to be honest. So, early birders out there, we have four scrappy templates for you. It's scrap crazy. These are they. These are the six inch scrap, 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 careful for £19.99. So you're saving a couple of pounds off the usual. And with these shapes, I shall show you in just a second, you can create organised chaos. <laughs> so yes, you're using small scraps of fabric and um, sewing together in somewhat of a willy nilly nature. But as you can see, all of those blocks are the same. Um, so it does give a uniformity to your quilt. So it's not just a random sewing bits of fabric together. There is method in this madness. Um, so the instructions are in there as well. With creative grids, we bring a lot of creative grids rulers. They have grippy bits on the bottom so they don't slip when you're cutting, which is a huge bonus. Um, but they also put um, a QR code on their instructions because they have um, a channel on YouTube with lots of demonstrations on there. They also have a Pinterest page. Um, so if you wanted to take a look on Pinterest, have a look for Creative Grids and you've got lots of project, project ideas. Um, so there are pages and pages of designs that you can actually use with this very um, template itself. So if you get it home and you think, I don't know what to do with it, either go to YouTube and look at the videos or take a look on Pinterest. And if you'd like to follow us on Pinterest, we're on Sewing Street TV. So come and follow and then you'll be notified of all of the, the new pictures that we put on there. So we've got Pinterest, we have an Instagram um, page as well, so you can follow us there. And again, that's it, Pinterest and Instagram if you haven't used them before all about the photos um, all about the inspiration so on those days when I don't know you don't know what to do you can sit there and just scroll through and take a look at all of the pictures and inspiration that you have on there um, and of course you can go back on our YouTube channel as well if you follow us on YouTube I think it's a little bit confusing sometimes with YouTube if you're new to that world because it'll say subscribe and to me when you see subscribe I think how much do I pay for that subscription but on YouTube it's not. If you subscribe and then click on the little bell shape at the side of the subscription red box then you'll get notifications of whenever a new video goes on so we're going to be giving you a notification every single day because we upload all of our shows onto YouTube which means that you can watch back right back to the very beginning of Sewing Street which is the 14th of February we're quite new um, if you are watching oh hello if you're watching back <laughs> um, this early bird may well not be available so do check on the website or or on the phone lines it's a free phone number um, if we have stock of whatever it is that we are bringing in um, so this is one design that you can make with said templates but there are more so there's all of these different designs that you can create. I mean, if, if you look at the triangle there, that is the right dimensions to join those together and then you can make a rather large hexagon. But of course you can cut those down as well. Um, what about, I don't know what shape that is. It's kind of a, an elongated hexagon kind of shape. So, um, yep, six sides again, but those two are a bit longer. Do we call that a, a Mexican? <laughs> it's not a hexagon, it's a Mexican, we've decided. Uh, <laughs> um, and you've kind of got your jewel shapes there as well. So it's, it's not just one style of block that you can actually make. But I think these really make this stand out. Not a quilt made out of the, Oh, we've got rainbow fabrics coming up later on again, haven't we? So have a look. In, um, to have a look on the website and have a scroll down everything that we've got for the next four hours if you can't stay with us. These are the, some of the panels that we have, um, or we had, I don't know we've got them, which are exclusive to Sewing Street. All of those. So lots of different ideas for you, different types of fabrics. And of course, the different colours and placement of colours will, will give you a different kind of look. Um, so that's your early bird. That's £19.99. 
We have another little treat for you though. Tidy this away, tidy that, make room for Delphine. We have, we're on best behaviour today with guests in the studio. I've got a little area of my own. It's a cocktail bar just over here. Actually, it looks like the hairdressers. Anyway, that's later. Um, we've got another treat for you with the Alison glass panels. Now, you've seen these before in a bundle. You haven't seen them on their own. And these are under £10. They're only £9.99. Um, you could make two rather large cushion fronts out of these. You could make eight smaller. Or, or four if you're going to use that. Oh, round cushions would be nice, wouldn't they? Little round cushions. End of bolsters. Oh, and embroidery hoops would be amazing, wouldn't it? Just literally, all, all you need to do is to cut them out and put them in a frame and hang them on the wall. No sewing involved there. But if you like a bit of free motion embroidery, um, or you want to do a little bit of hand embroidery, then you could go over some of these areas. And they're lovely colours, though, as well. They're bright and they're fun and they're interesting. When you look, for instance, here you see the butterfly and then we've got a, is that a clover leaf down there as well. Got a big moth. Is that a moth? Gorgeous. Now these are pre-cut, so if you order more than one, they will come cut like this. It won't be all in one big long length. But there's loads that you can do with those. You know, even the background. So if you're going to cut the, the circle out, you've got a really lovely medallion kind of shape. But on the background, it, it, it's actually kind of a white on cream print. So you've got interest in the background as well. So if you are using these as a cushion cover, then you've, you've, got, you've got a nice little, um, nice little background there as well. And these are Alice and Glass. So you've got a quality of 100% cotton as well. But again, it's the first time you've seen these on their own, like so. Two colours. So this one has the ivory background. I like this one. So let's, let's open this one up and show you. I like this. I like, I like grey anyway, but um, doesn't that look striking? Really makes the colours stand out, doesn't it? And you can really see the background on this one as well. Wow. So we've offered this before now in quilt bundles. Not everybody's a quilter. So what are you going to make with yours? I, I think, I'm thinking homewares, cushion covers. I'm thinking you could maybe fold or cut that in half like so. And then you've got a table runner or two. So I'd have some maybe, I've got any colour fabric. You know, even blue. So you could have that as like um, a border to make it a little bit bigger. And then put some of the... Um, that heat reflective wadding behind there. I, don't, I can't remember what it's called or even if we've got any on the website, but we, we have had. But you can pick any colour and just make... Oh, you could do a wall hanging, couldn't you? It's a really big panel, this one, isn't it? I mean, you could do two, have a wider one. Oh, no, no, two individual wall hangings. And now what I'm thinking is... So if you, you put a, a board around there and a backing on it and then a rod in the top, and, uh, and a piece of cord or some nice ribbon to hang it up. And then you can quilt all over it, but make two of them. And then you can hang those either side of your fireplace, the, the chimney breast. You know that, the, 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 you never know what to put on there, do you? Um, or up your stairs, just up the stairs like. But you could do, could do little ones, couldn't you? You could have four of those up your stairs like that. Just a little mm, garden cushions. Nice little, um, oh, seat pads would be nice if you've got a round seat. Be a little seat, wouldn't it? <laughs> might, might need a bigger one of those for my bottom. <laughs> I said bottom. <laughs> it's only £9.99. pence. So never been offered to you before outside a bundle. So that's the first time you've seen those. Like so. Now, if you'd like to order, um, you can go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com. 
um, you will go straight to a video and if you go there now you'll see me hi and um, underneath there as you scroll down you'll see all of the products that we have for you in the shows today and as you keep going you'll see all of the rest of the products we have on the website as well so that's one way to place your order um, the other way is on the phone lines and it's a UK based uh, phone number which is 0800 001 4433 and if you've got any questions or if you if I want to chat <laughs> The line manager won't be happy about that, but you know, if you want, if you want to chat, there's no stopping you. Uh, it's a free phone number. Stay there as long as you like. Oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> and that's a way to place your order um, as well, if you'd like to um, buy anything. And in fact, if you do, um, you pay three ninety five postage for your first order of the day, and then for every other order of the day, you don't pay a penny. So it's like having postage free all the way through to midnight tonight, because we put all of the orders together at the end of the day. So we add everything up and only charge you one postage. Um, oh gosh, now then, where are they? Our unicorn cushion and our Highland cow cushion. These are in a bundle together and they're coming up later on and a third of the stock sold out already. We're having some busy days, aren't we? It's like deja vu, this. That's gonna go. Oh, Andrew's been in touch this morning. Morning, Angie from Great Yarmouth. She was with us yesterday as well. Um, if you'd like to get in touch, it'd be nice to hear from you. You can go to our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. We do have a Facebook fans page, but I shall shortly be on the Sewing Street TV page. So if you've got any questions or comments or pictures, or you just want to say hello from Great Yarmouth or anywhere else, then um, that's the place to be. Or you can email us, so you can email the studio directly, which is studio at Sewing Street. Dot com. Now, I'm going to introduce Delphine in just a second. I need to introduce the bundle for you. First of all, and we're talking Tilda. Now, these are the, uh, the samples that um, Delphine's made. Aren't these amazing? Uh, have made with the fabrics that we have for you. Um, the way that it's going to work, we do. Our studio is actually two metres, and it looks tiny. Well, it is tiny. Two metres is tiny for a studio, isn't it? Two miles is normally uh, the norm. Um, but we are two metres. So when Delphine comes in, she's going to shimmy over here. And I'm going to, I'm going to be way over there in the distance. So we are sanitised. We are socially distanced. We're, we're going by the rules. Um, right, this is the Tilda Quilts book. I love a bit of Tilda. And do you know... I've got quite a few Tilda books. It's not so much um, the actual projects. It's the whole Tilda lifestyle, the look of it. I love looking... It's like looking into somebody's window and seeing what's in the background. Because um, I love the whole look, the feeling of it, the colours of the fabrics. I love the dolls. But again, there are some amazing projects in here as well. I just, I just like to live there. So this is the cat cushion. And um, Delphine's going to show us some techniques from there. Do you know, there's, there's more instructions in this than I seem to have remembered in some of my Tilda books from the past. Ooh. So, yeah, really in-depth book, this, for your £14.99. Pretty, isn't it? Oh, um, so that's quilts from um, Tilda's studio book. RRP $16.99. And we've put together a bundle of fat eighths and half meters, which is enough to make both the there you go, which is enough to make the um, the cushion cover and the little quilt behind us. You may need to add a little bit more of your own. Um, so here you've got a meter and a half of vanilla, half a meter of sky, and then these are all the bon voyage fat eighths so you've got a whole load of those i shan't take them all out but you get the idea for 59 pounds and 99 pence right now again if you'd like to order um if you're brand new to us here on sewing street it's ever so easy take a look at this and i'll see you in a second
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Okay, so this is exciting, isn't it? So th this is Delphine. Hello, everybody. Welcome back again. Thank you and for having I'm me. Way, way over there. Way over there. Way more than two <laughs> metres. I thought it was more like three metres. I think it's quite big. Yeah. And I, I have to explain as well, this is a creaky chair. It's not my joints. <laughs> it is it very creaky. feels like my joints. Yeah, it could do with a bit of oiling, I think, I think couldn't it? Could. it? Oh, so. So what are we going to do? Oh, well, so we're going to have a little demo today of how I created the cat cushion and also the little plums as well. So I only did the six panel on the quilt, but there will be enough to do a bit more. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm also using the same uh, bundle from the uh, Fat Eights to also create another one of these. So they do, oh, really? it does go quite far. Yeah. So they do, they do go quite far. Book? absolutely lovely can i have a pick it up and have For a bit sure. of a play so the one thing as soon as i picked up this book i knew i had to buy it buy something from it make something <laughs> from it so every you bought something uh, really <laughs> every single project was just beautiful and it was one of those books that when you were flicking through it that i, I just wanted to make it all but then there was a couple of projects you know when you're looking through a book and you go oh and you have to go back yeah. straight away it was the cats I just thought it was just so clever. I'd love to have made it into a quilt like this one, but I don't think I would have the time or the uh, the fabric to do it, but it was absolutely stunning. And uh, I think it's one of those quilts that would have a real wow factor if it was like on a wall or a bed. And these are the size that you could have as actual cushions that you sleep on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Rather than just a decorative cushion. So obviously you might not want to put your head on that every day. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to uh, do a little demo of how to do that one. So I think we'll start off with this one. So we'll just go through slightly through the instructions. So could we have, just have another look at that um, quilt? The, we... the, this one here. Yeah, just the, on the previous page. So on this... the previous page. Oh, there yeah, we are. That one. Look at that. So that's the that's the same. It's the same, it's the same one, over. yeah, but this, all they do is, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but they just reverse. Oh, right. So some of the cats have got their back to each other and some are facing each other. So just so there. Shimmy it this way a little bit. Uh, there, there we are. So Clever, yeah, so this, this is the panel that I've done um, today. And then obviously you can just, it reverses it. But the instructions, it does it all for you anyway, so. The instructions I'm, I'm are trying to keep it really still. It's a bit noisy. <laughs> Very noisy. Can you hear it? I wonder if they can hear it. Last, You're just... last time I sat, we, we, we did um, um, a, sewing, <laughs> a sewing machine um, a, a few weeks ago and it had a, a knee lifter. And uh, so Joe was directing at the time. That's why I need to sit down to use a knee lifter because I can't, I can't do that with my knee. Um, so he sat me here and sat me on a chair and it very slowly kept going down. So you kept going below the desk? Yeah, but it was so slow I couldn't feel it happening. And it was like all of a sudden I'm the sewing machine saying, it's like, what's going on there? So that one's definitely not coming it's, down. It's not going think. down, but now I've got the creaky one. Yeah, so you've got to sit really, really still. Yeah. Or just twist around. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, just that, using that's your not going to happen. So <laughs> excuse the squeaking noise, basically. Um, so yeah, the instructions I did, um, when you are doing it, make sure that you're following the correct... Um, Orientation, that's the word, okay. isn't it? So make sure you follow that one. It does do have on the this page the cat and pillow cushion, but it, it, all it will say is refer back to okay. the um, the quilt. So, so how difficult is it? 
Um, the bigger panels, so the actual cat, quite straightforward actually. This is bit is more, the, the smaller bit with the bird and the tip of the tail. This is a little bit um, tricky, but I wouldn't say too difficult. I think obviously I did do quite a lot of free motion quilting on there, but if you didn't, I still think it packs a punch anyway. You yeah. just stitched in the ditch around the actual shapes. So the only shapes you're actually uh, creating are the half square triangles. And uh, I think you, uh, we'll do a little demo on those, but I think we've done a few demos on those, haven't we, in the past? Yeah. And there's just one curve of the uh, of the back, which I'll show you how to do those, which is why I really wanted to demo the curve uh, on the, the cat and also the plums, because when I first started sewing anyway, I didn't, I was quite nervous about um, sewing curves. Yeah. And uh, to the point I used to avoid them, actually, uh, thinking, oh, they'd be too difficult. But then I started making a lot of toys and things which are do have a lot of curves in them. And actually, they're quite straightforward, really, aren't they? So I'm, I'm going to hopefully show you that it's really straightforward <laughs> to do. But if uh, I can't do it, then I'll Debbie will be jumping in and take over. What? She what? can do it for me instead. <laughs> right then. So should we sort yeah, out my going. little bit of a mess? So that's that's the plums. So I'll just pop that. Is that too messy there? Oh, is that okay? Right, okay. So I have done a little jump, I have jumped ahead a little bit and I have already done the small, the small little kitty cat. So I've done that one already. I don't know if you can see that one. Ooh, ooh, overhead. There, so I've done the small one. So the one thing you will need is, as I've done on here, the cat to make sure that you do the cat a separate colour to the background, but it does show you in the book, otherwise it just won't stand out. So I'll just pop that one over there. So the pattern pieces, really simple. I just use some A4 paper. You go to the back of the book and where's the cat? There. So, so, so what, what you need to trace these off is the little light box that we had did. on the show yesterday. Yeah, and not putting <laughs> it up at the window in my kitchen and my neighbours walking past thinking, what is she doing? Why is she pushing up a book against the window? So yeah, a light box, definitely. I definitely need to invest in one of those. So yeah, I, all I did was get a couple of A4 pieces of paper and for the bigger one, I just uh, taped it. You can see that tape. Just taped it together and that's what I used to cut out my pieces. So just a little bit of A4 paper. So I'll just... Put that underneath there. Okay, so we're going to start off by just how I created the little bird and the tail, the tip of the tail. Uh, help if I turn this on. Okay, so we'll just hide the envelope underneath here, <laughs> just that I used, crabbed on the kitchen side, so I made sure everything was in its place. There we are. Don't want to lose anything, not like last time. So. To create the little, we're going to just do the bottom of the tail because uh, obviously we've got a lot to show you today. So I want to make sure that we get it all in. So as you can see on the little tail here, on the little tip. Just oh, sorry. <laughs> the little tip of the tail. Move that over, it is like a little close. curve. Oh, there, there is a little curve on the end of the tail there. So we're just going to do that. And all that is, so these are one and a half inch um, squares of fabric. And we have two tight these. This is probably the most fiddliest bit, actually. So you're just going to put one of these little squares in the bottom corner just here. And we're going to sew a line from one corner just down to the bottom corner here. So I'm just going to do that quickly. So in standing up, I need more practice of this, I think. Okay. I have a meandering foot pedal occasionally down there, so just to warn you, it may end up next door at some point. Okay, <laughs> so I'll end up going slipping over down here. Okay, we're on, yep. Whoop. Uh, there we go. Where's the scissors? We've got the scissors There's one no scissors here. on that one. Oh, I'm used to a scissor. Oh, oh, oh. Dear. oh. I want scissors, you know. Yeah, I need a pair of scissors. Let me... Uh... Scissors down there. There we are. <laughs> Used to scissors. There we go. Ah. So, I, I, have you got any tips? You know, small pieces of fabric like that? Uh -huh. When you start sewing, a lot of machines, mine included, eat it. It eats it. Yes. So I tend to, I don't know about you, you could probably uh, give me a few tips here. <laughs> so I just tend to go forward uh, slightly and then I'll go back and then I'll... 
come forward again. Does that make sense? Because Yes, and um, sometimes if I remember, I'll hang on to the threads at the end and pull it out. But my Good machine's tip. got scissors, so there's yeah, no be used thread to, scissors. to hang on to. Yeah. But still, I'll uh, try it again. So, yeah, I'll just tend to go a couple of threads ahead. Like you say, my, my machine eats it as well. So I'll just go a few steps ahead and then I'll go backwards. But I'm going to... Those are going to be... Um, oh, I'm going to have to get used to this. So those... Um, the corner here, where you start, that will be uh, hidden anyway when we sew it to the, to the back. Oh, OK. So I'll just... Those, those will be uh, hidden. So I'm just going to trim those bits off. And, oh, where's the ironing mat? There we are. Definitely need an iron for this. Lots and lots of pressing. And the iron. I don't know if they have any in stock at the moment. Those uh, little prim irons would be ideal for this. Yeah, you? Just really small one. A little bit, yeah. So I'll try not to trip over my wires. So, yeah, so this is going to be the little tip of the tail. Obviously, if you're at home, you'll take a bit more time doing it and a bit tidier. You've got a bit of time. OK, so we'll just flatten that one out. So that's going to be just the bottom there. So let's do the other little pieces. So again, with our one and a half inch squares, we're just going to construct the bottom of the tail. And all that is, is the uh, one and a half inch square of your patterned fabric, some plain, and then the tip of the tail. So with a quarter inch seam, we're just going to sew those together quickly. How long does it take you to make the whole thing? The cutting out takes a long time. So, so um, but then I just have the radio on or a podcast on and just, um, you know, I can just lose myself in that. Just be careful when you're cutting out the bird and the end of the tail, though, because obviously the measurements are different for the smaller cat. So just make sure you concentrate on cutting those pieces out. All right, so, yeah. I think it's quite relaxing. It's all part of the process, isn't it? It is. I quite like it. A lot of people say, oh, cutting out is a chore. No, it's No, all... I like it. I enjoy it, it's actually. It's And I think it gives you a bit more of a sense of, uh, of accomplishment I've, and achievement. I've got a non squeaky oh. chair arriving. But it may be the one that sinks down. We'll see. <laughs> OK, so that is... The tip of the tail. Excuse the uh, excuse my messy thread. So you'd give that another quick press, and they're just swapping over the chairs. <laughs> oh, I like that chair. Yeah. I think it might be the one that goes down. Then. We'll see. Okay, so I've given seamless. that a little <laughs> bit of a press. <laughs> Where have you gone? <laughs> Debbie's disappeared. <laughs> this is comical. <laughs> oh, dear. <It's> <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll have to stand up. You've got to sit on that just to show just how far down you've got. I think she's done that on purpose. <laughs> I'm just going to carry on while she sorts the chair out. Right? <laughs> oh dear, sorry about that. So, are you going to go back to the other one? I'm going to stand up. Stand up. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Are you OK there? She's crying <laughs> over here. Someone get her a tissue. Hannah's apologising. She's so, so sorry. Oh, dear. Are you OK? You didn't hurt I'm, yourself. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an old lady now, you know. I could do without that. Oh, <laughs> funny. So the, to do the top of the tail, half square triangles, you just draw a line from corner to corner, sew a quarter inch seam down each side, which I've done, drawing the... Um, Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> keep calm and carry on. <laughs> we'll edit this out later. It'll be fine. Yeah. And then I'll have a throne later. <laughs> going to give these just a little press each. Trim them off. Obviously, again, at home, you'll be a lot tidier than this. And then all you'll do is sew those three squares together. And I'm going to have a little... This is what I made earlier a moment. <laughs> Ta -da, there we are. So here we are. We have the the bird. This is the this will be the bird, and that will be the uh, tip of the um, cat's tail. Was it better that way? Yeah, yeah. So it'll be better to show you that way. So that's the one you probably need to concentrate on doing the most during this pattern. So just once you've got that out of the way, the rest bit, the rest of it's quite a doddle really. So I am going to use my 
as a bit of a reference point. So as you can see at the top there, I just need to put in the little beak. I know I've got a beak somewhere. <laughs> Didn't think you'd be saying that on the telly. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sure I did. It can be a beakless bird. I'll find it. I'll find it. We'll move on. Yeah. But, but should we have a message from Jenny? Yes. She, Hello, Jenny. Is she on Facebook or she sent a message? Right. There we go. Onto community. Refresh. Oh, morning, Jenny. She says, morning, Debbie and Delphine. Loving the show. I think Debbie may have had too much coffee this morning. I think it's not, it's not me. I'm giving a wobbly chair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a nice bag. Caught as you go Sophie bag. Ooh. Um, remember, it's um, Facebook TV if you wanted to send in a message for us this morning, but that's it. Did you find your beak? Uh, I've moved on to the ears. I'll find it. It will, it will come up. Oh, no, I found well, one. Birds don't have ears. Well, they do have ears, but you, they, you don't see them, do you? Found, found it. a beak. I found it. I found a beak. Sue says, thanks for the comedy moment. Well, I didn't think it was funny. Oh, we did. Could have broke my neck. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just moved on to the ears now and again I'm just going in our new studio with proper chairs nice big studio no no squeaky chairs no squeaky chairs we, we can sit down and sew in the new studio as well We're gonna oh lovely because yeah. I did um, get my sewing machine out the other day in the kitchen because I tend to do all this in the, on the kitchen side and I have my sewing machine out. But of course, the kitchen um, bench is lower, isn't it? Yes. So I was sewing a lot of scrap and I was just doing it blind. So as I was going, it, I nearly took my finger off, I think. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> so that wasn't a good idea. I went back to the dining room with the sewing machine. So there we are. So you might wonder what that piece is there. That is the top, top of the ears. Just there, because now I've found Don't my beak. Show that over there so people can see exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Ooh. So this, should I lean it against? Is that right? Like that? Oh, like that. That's it. <laughs> oh, oh, I swiddle around. That's it. There we go. So I'm just doing this bit here right at the moment. And now I'm going to go back to the beak in a minute because you see there's a little square here and that's all it is. All that is is a, um, a one inch square uh, piece of fabric and you're just going to sew from corner to corner. And when you fold it back, give it a bit of a press, it will look like that, just like that. You know, I think when you, um, when you see quilts really close up like them, I mean, it's something that you look at from a distance and they look amazing. But when you break it down to that's that square, that's that square, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. That it's, it's like, it looks more, it seems more achievable when you see tiny pieces like It's that. like putting together a jigsaw, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So on that, well, I do use, a, I don't know if you'll be better at putting that up. Oh, no. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to put a little, put a little beak on. This is um, supposed to be a one inch square. It's not. So I'm going rogue. I'm just going to go for it. You rebel. I am. I'm just going to try and guess it. There we go. I keep going for that. <laughs> so I'm just going to... I said that would have been a smaller piece of fabric. And with that, we're going to sew these two pieces together. So it will be the bird and your square with its beak, now attached. The we'll instructions are easy to follow. They are. They, 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 it's all done with a diagram as well. So it it's all done by letters. So you know how many pieces of A to cut out, and then it's like so A, then B together. So yeah, it was, it was easy to follow. Yeah. There's quite a lot of them as well, and it is the step and step instructions. Um, but I tend to use pictures more to, to learn from. Yeah. I'm a, more of a visual sewer, um, so I, I go with, with more of the diagrams uh, rather than just reading through all the instructions. I don't know if that's naughty or not. No, but, I think most people do. That's yeah, I mean. so I, I, I tend to like the... You are, you're right here, Debbie. <laughs> Got a wandering foot. So those are those two pieces. OK. I'm just... I'm not, I'm not picking up my emails. I am actually... Looking at your messages, because we've got one from um, 
Artia, Nick, I haven't spoken to you for years. How are you? Lovely to hear from you this morning. Um, it says morning, making me laugh this morning, Debbie. Happy sewing from Artie, lad. Oh, come and say, yeah, I haven't seen you in years, and when you do tune in, I'm falling off a chair. In our new studio. I, th I think we were sabotaged. And apparently, this chair has come from jewellery maker next door. It was a setup, was it? It was a setup. Yep, definitely. <laughs> there we are. So his little beak. You can just about see it there. So I did um, cut that piece a little bit too long. So I'm just going to trim that up. The pair of scissors, just tidy it all up. Although I am making a bit of a mess here. So that's that bit done. So let's move on now to the little kitty cat. So I have already done the tops of his ears, which would be that way. So let's do the head. This will be his little face. And we just got to sew on the ears just here. I've done that, the white orientation, haven't I? Yeah. Yes, I have. Do yeah. they give you um, advice in the book as to what kind of colours to use or colour placement? Yeah, it even tells you, um, with the uh, fabrics, it even tells you exactly what fabric to use for each piece. Oh, OK. Yeah, depending on what range they're using. So that's quite that's clever, good. especially having got to think about it. Yeah. Uh, with this one, I didn't really think too much about the colours. I just thought I'll do this one in more of the purples and the small one in more of the reds. And uh, But in this one, when I did the quilt, I just put them all together because they work so well together yeah. anyway, don't they? So you haven't got to think about it too much. So, so they're very clever with the fabrics, aren't they, in choosing all the colours yeah. to match. And they're very distinctive, aren't they? You can, you mm. can recognise the Tilda fabric. Really, really pretty. I love this one. These ones are my favourites. And it, They have got a tiny bit of the yellow in as well because you can't really see that much of the yellow. So that's why I picked it up in the nose. Yeah, so I thought so it gives good. it a little... So I'm going to now, so from corner to corner right across there. Again, you can pin it. Um, I'm just, again, just going for it. So you want to do that for each ear. So that's one down. And move on to next one. Give those a little trim. There we are, and cut off any threads as well. Open out the ears. Quick press. You definitely need an iron, don't you? Sometimes more than the sewing machine, sometimes for something yeah. like this, don't you? A nice clean iron. I need to give mine a really good clean. You know, and it goes all black on the bottom. You have to get the paracetamol on it. Really? So, yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Oh, can that be my tip then? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, paracetamol, not the ones in the plastic. Yeah. But just a normal, um, you have to be really careful, hot iron, paracetamol, yeah. rub it all over the iron, and what it does, it cleans it, takes it all off, and then oh. just with a rag. Yeah. Didn't know that. Oh, I'm quite proud of myself now that <laughs> I came up with that one. Yeah. I'll try that when I get home. Mine's yeah. not even dirty, but I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah, paracetamol on your iron. But not to be like the chalky tablet. The oh, that's the one, the chalky, not, not, not the plastic, plastic one. <laughs> no, that wouldn't do your iron much good. Yeah, the chalky tablet one. Oh. Yeah. I want another top tip. We should, we should have um, a top tip section, shouldn't we, on the show? I was uh, saying to Hannah earlier so about me doing, um, you know, a meet the designer and things like that, about a top tip. Can that can be my top tip? Yeah, I'm going to own that one. Do share if you have any. So Facebook or email, studio at sewingstreet.com if you wanted to drop us an email. That's where I am. Well, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm on Facebook. Well, I'm... <laughs> there we are. I thought yesterday was a strange day, but today's turning out to be a little bit stranger. Monday madness. Ooh. So I'm now going to put on the cat's collar. It will start to come together now. You'll start actually seeing the, uh, the cat come together now. So here we are. Have you got cats? No, I'd love one though. Um, but uh, it's just, you know, with the kids. I've got kids. They're, they're busy, <laughs> busy enough. 
Yeah. So you um, had kids instead of cats. Yeah. My my little <laughs> my little darling boys. Uh, so uh, I've got out of doing the homeschooling though this morning, <laughs> which is quite nice. We've got three old oh. cats. And <laughs> she was really mean yesterday, Sid. Um, they're, they're about twenty. My cats are. And, Twenty. Um, yeah, and Bobby and the dog was asleep on the sofa, and she and she was snoring and everything. Absolutely, you know when they're all twitching and everything. Absolutely, fast asleep. And Sid just walked past and went right down her face. Oh, that's not kind. And we go away in the caravan quite a lot, so um, you know it's just you know friends of ours who have got uh, pets. You know they struggle to get people to look after them and things. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, one day. <laughs> there's my so there's the two sections come together so you think of it as four blocks so block one block two so there's the cat's head I've now sewn it to the this panel so I'm now going to just give it a very quick press and um, seems open and seems to one side I don't care to to the one side especially with the with the white fabric but I've yeah I've sewn that bit down <laughs> and we move on we just smile and go on to the next bit so Okay, this is the one t little tricky bit. So when we're sewing curves, it does say in the book, fold in half. The natural thing to do is to do that. But we want to find the arc curve. And I was looking in the book and I just couldn't get it right. And then my husband, Nick, who's um, a mechanical engineer, bless him, came in and with all this like, I don't even know what he said, but it was quite complicated terminology. He was like, oh, no, you need to find the, the, the half arc. No idea what you say. Came in <laughs> and he did it. And I was quite annoyed, but he was right. <laughs> so you go from the, where the curve is, you put the points together. So not that way. You take the curve to there. And then you iron it. So you get a little crease, so or you can put a little pin in it or mark it out with a pen. And you do the same with the back piece, the background piece. So again, corner to corner. So as you can see, those two curves meet up. So this is what this is the technique that you'll be doing to do the plum quilt as well. So, so there you go. So then you've got your two little points. So you, what we're going to do now, now I'm not much of a pinner. Do you pin much? Not, if I'm dressmaking, yeah. yeah, but not normally. So I'm not a big pinner, but I do recommend using pins for this. So right sides together, line up those two creases where you've put in that, um, made that little mark. And then start, this is just the way I do it. You might, find, you might have a different way of doing things. And then, first of all, pin where the mark is. Because when I sew toys and things, this is how I, this is how I do it. This is the, the method that works best for me. You might have other um, ways of doing it. I think it's important, though. You, you may think, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pin in the middle and then sew outwards. But you're actually sewing two pieces of fabric that are both cut on the bias. Yes. So they're, they're going to stretch, aren't they? Yeah. So th this is a, a, a process that you really should do. So there's plenty of, um, and also that's going to be coming out straight, like so. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So that's going to be coming out straight on top there. So you need to make sure that that stays in line with that back piece there. And then, so once you've got your two points, like Debbie just said, it's on the bias, so it will stretch. So, but by having those two pieces already, uh, those three corners already pinned, it means that the rest of the pinning will be quite even. Oh, that wasn't a pin. <laughs> what was Ooh, it? <laughs> it was a needle. Uh, or a broken one. Oops. Okay, there we are. So as you can see, as you pin along, it's a lot easier to pin rather than just going from one end to another. If you go from one end to another, it will stretch more and it will be it will be a bit wonky. So and also when you sew it, if you sew it with the 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 actual cap piece down and you can just smooth out any wrinkles. There we go. Let's redo that piece. So it, 
you might want to put a few more pins in there especially if it's your first time doing a curve and to just take your time because this is the only curve you've got anyway so I'm going to take this back to the machine and hope I've sewed it on the right way round just get my pin pot over here so I can tidy as I go with the um, bundle by the way we have less than 20 of these remaining now. So there's a metre and a half of the ivory fabric. You've got half a metre of the blue, then a whole stack of fat eights. I'm just going to open one up, not all of them, just so you can see what size a fat eight is. It will be, it's half a fat quarter, basically. And a half a fat, and a fat quarter is a, a quarter of a metre and so on and so forth. So that's how much you're getting. And are there 40 in there altogether? 20, sorry, 20 fat eights. Um, each measuring 20 inches by 10 inches, so you're getting 20 of those. Plenty enough, Delphine was saying, to make yeah. the pillowcase and the little quilt at the back as well. If you want to go for a couple of those, you can do. So if you wanted to make a large quilt, then you may need a little bit more. And, uh, whoops, maybe we've only got that one postage all day as well. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Isn't that clever? There you go. Easy, isn't it? It, it is when, yeah. when you're shown how to do it. So if you've been put off by curves before. Don't be put off anymore. Because it's nice, it's nice and easy. Like you said, and the iron's quite flat as well. And yeah. then onto the tail. So I'm now going to attach the tail, which obviously when this comes in, will meet up there. So again, just straight line. I have to keep looking down for this pedal. <laughs> Naughty. Mine's, mine's ended up in Coventry before now, so yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's, it's good for the thighs. It is. So I'm st <laughs> stretching. stretching. Again, I'm not back stitching only because those uh, will be hidden in there. When I, sew the, when I sew the top part to the bottom. So again, quick press. So that's uh, um, just, yeah, they'll go that way. Over to the, what do you say, over to the dark side? To the dark side, yes. There we are. So that's block number three. So we've just got to do the, the, the belly and the legs. So this is the cat's tummy. And... I've just used a bit of plain fabric. Like I said, you want to have another fabric. That's why the blue, I think the blue really makes that the, some of these colours really pop out, yeah. really stands out. So uh, these are the legs. So this is the tummy. So that's like the cat's chest. This is the, the, the tummy. So right sides together, just two pieces of plain fabric. The plain fabric's the legs. So when you're making this up at home, do you do like all, all the blocks across the top and then the middle ones in? kind of in rows and then sew them together yeah so you... i just sewed them in rows yeah I, I think just to get that part done uh like i said that was the trickiest bit to do the bird and the the tip of the tail so so yeah so i just did it in in my mind i did it in four pieces yeah. and then just putting the four pieces together at the end i just found it a lot easier um there we, there we go it goes off again <laughs> so once you've done the uh, the, the, the smaller bit, the bird and the tail, the rest of it's quite quick. It comes together quite quick after that. I so said, we're nearly, we've nearly done it. Um, and obviously the face, um, if we have time, I'll, I'll uh, show you. But with the, um, the cheeks, are just a, a little bit of card. And you just do the yes. gathered stitches and yeah. then you just sew them on. And the eyes are just little French knots. Got about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okie do. We'll get there, we'll do it. All right, so I'm gonna go super, super fast now. So open it up. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I, I was asking um, viewers what they wanted me to make and somebody came up with um, a pocket organizer. And I started making it, then I heard in my ear, you've got 10 minutes to do this. And did you do it in 10 minutes? No, the needle dropped out of the machine. Oh, <laughs> Never had that happen before, even at home. But as I was sewing, the needle dropped out. We're nearly done. There we go. So that's the body. Quick press. Now I'm going to sew the chest and legs to the back. Right sides together. And... 
it's a nice size, this, isn't it? It it's is. For somebody that's um, maybe new to quilting but a little bit daunted by the size of quilts, basically. Or maybe you don't have the room. Um, your machine's not, you know, big enough, or you don't have the space to make a, a big quilt. That's it's a nice it's size a, project. It is. It's a lovely project, and I think it's. It, it also. I know I said it takes a long time to cut it out, but I think cutting it out, cutting out sort of skill in itself anyway, and I think it tests you on lots of different uh, levels, this one. And it's certainly not an advanced um, uh, piece, uh, but yeah, I think but it just looks, packs a punch, doesn't it? It does look really... I think that the style of it and the fabrics, to me, that looks like you've been to a, um, a really expensive interior shop. Yeah. Doesn't it? You, you, what do you pay a fortune or something like that? You're welcome beautiful. to buy you it. <laughs> <laughs> Put a price on it then, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and there we are. <laughs> Done. That's our little cat block. There you go. That's the There it is. Can you see? There we are. So, and all you do... Oh, look at that. Yeah. But there is a little uh, little sashing down the middle. You just put a one and a half sh uh, inch strip between the two, but this way they're having a bit of a cuddle look. <laughs> yeah. And there you There's go. There's not a lot of matching points and things, is no. there? No, it's just just this one, just the, just just the bird. The corner, yeah. The rest of it, you can... No, you don't have to worry about that. No, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, so, so that's that one. About five minutes? Five minutes. I'll okay, just show you one, one little bit of the plum. So again, just to go over that uh, curve again, I have already pinned these mm -hmm. together. Um, so again, just to do this little block. So once you've done the four pieces, just think of it as a, a like a patchwork square. Right. Just four pieces. You know when we sew, as a new sewer, we tend to do the four, just four squares, don't we, together. Once you've made these, that's all it is. Right, okay. So it's quite simple. So again, when you chop out your pieces, chop out your pieces, again that curve line, go from curve to curve in half and not that way. Otherwise the points won't match. Right. So I'll just do the one and then I'll hand you over to the lovely Debbie and I'll go and have a coffee I think. <laughs> Not no, as much coffee as you, though. <laughs> don't, just don't sit down. <laughs> and so you'll do four of those. You don't have to snip into the curve, like you know, if, you, if you're making a curve in a, in a dress. You yeah, you slip in. No, I no. I mean, as you can see, with a quarter inch seam, that's live. That's yeah. live, really flat. So you imagine you've, I've done four of those. It's just four squares, like you would with a patchwork square, and that's your block. And then you can do as many as you like. But I said you can do quite a lot of those, and I think it does pack quite a, a bit of a punch there. Some more of a wall hanging, and with the um, the leaves, all that is is a piece of paper. Get your fabric, cut out. I'll do it so you can see it that way. Just cut out just about a centimetre all the way around. And then that's where I've, I did snip into those bits. Yeah. And then you just iron over the top. So similar to how you did with the, yeah. the cat's cheeks. And that's that. And then you free motion embroidered, haven't you? I did, yeah. Yeah. That is, that, that, that is the real finishing touch. That makes it look so impressive. I quite enjoyed that. Okay. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. You're going to be back again about 10 o'clock, yeah? Yep. So a cup of coffee. Cook a cup of coffee. Cup it coffee. was a very big coffee. Sure. And I normally have decaf, but it was like... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that chair at all, it's me. No. Um, so we'll see you again later on. Lovely. Um, if you'd like to order anything from the show, remember, it's very easy to do so. So I'll give you the details again of everything that we've had and that Delphine's used in this show, just after this. 
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. So again, Delphine's going to be back again at uh, 10 o'clock this morning with something completely different. In fact, we're looking at unicorns and we're look. oh, do you know what? Um, if you're interested in the unicorn and the Highland Cow cushions, we'll have a look at those in the, just after the break in the next hour. Um, don't wait until the 10 o'clock show to order those because it's happening again. Um, things are selling out before we even get to the show. So just, just to warn you, if you're interested in those, have a look online on sewingstreet.com and you'll see all the details there of what exactly is in the kit and how much it is and all that kind of malarkey. Right, with our bundle, um, we have single figures now, so less than 10 of these remaining. Here you will have a metre and a half of the ivory, you will have half a metre of the blue, and you've got a whole pile, in fact, 20 pieces of your fat eighths. So there is plenty enough here to make the cushion cover that Delphine has just been showing you. <laughs> and the quilt at the back as well. And of course, if you wanted to go larger with the quilt or make a couple of cushion covers, you can order two of those fabric bundles as well. It's really pretty, isn't it? I did say, I don't, when Delphine came in this morning, she was hanging that up and I said, did you make that? And I, I think I, it may have come across wrong because it looks bought to me. It looks, it just looks amazing. So plenty enough to make those two. The bundle doesn't come with instructions. The instructions are in the book. So let's take another look here. Um, that's the, isn't it gorgeous? So this is the quilt kind of full size. You can make that as big or as small as you like. You could just do a couple of, oh, that's nice as well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Somebody, oh, look at the lampshades. Oh, they're really nice. Oh, I, see, I, want, I just want to move into this house, wherever it is. I think it's beautiful. So let alone the projects. I just like the house. She won't mind if I move in, I'm sure. Um, the quilting makes all the difference, doesn't it? Oh, I'd love to be that skillful. <laughs> now then, let's have a look. These are, we're looking at the quilts, not the props. Stop looking at the teacups and the... What was this? Got teapots and coffee pots, look. It's one of those books, I think, if you're... Uh, if you've been tempted into quilting that haven't quite found the right, see that one, the right project yet. There's so many right projects in here. Oh, and they're like the Tilda dolls. It's the whole Tilda lifestyle, isn't it? The look, the fabrics, the ambiance, the, the feeling, the decor, the colours. It's, it's all such a, a lovely lifestyle. So I'm just being a little self-indulgent here because I'm quite enjoying flicking through here. Um, as Delphine said as well, lots and lots of instructions and you've even got the fabrics itemised if you want to make exactly um, the quilt that's in here. You've got all of the different fabrics that are unnumbered so you know exactly which one to use. There's your cat's look. Again, slightly different colourway. I kind of like ours with the blue in the background, to be honest. And again, lots and lots and lots of instructions. Look at the quilt. Wow. Um, okay, so if you wanted to order, again, be quick for those. The bundles, um, not going to last too much longer, I don't think. The quilt book, 
by Tilda. Again, that's absolutely flying as well. Remember, we do still have the early bird left for you too. Have a look online now. You haven't even seen it yet, but our little iron pincushion has been selling really, really well. So more of that coming up later on. If you can't wait for me, go to stonestreet.com and take a look on the website there and, uh, and shop to your heart's content knowing that you're only going to pay one postage of £3.95. Right, we've got more coming up. We've got um, a little bit of fun with fat quarters coming up in the next hour and we're, I'm going to be making a, a brush roll from the book. So I'll see you again in a few minutes. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back to Sewing Street. Yes, we're live for four hours every morning, as from today. So 8, 9, 10, 11, we finish at 12 o'clock, which is 
brilliant, isn't it? Even more sewing for you as from this week. And that's going to be every single day, I know. Um, okay, in this hour, we have some kits for you. We've got some really lovely natural fabric uh, fat quarter bundles and we've got inspiration from Wendy Gardner's two fat quarter books as well. But we're going to start off with a bit of ironing. Not getting very far. I don't think it's on. Brand new for you today. This is a, isn't that lovely? What a lovely little pink cushion that is. Um, it's, I used to collect irons like this. That took me back. Um, there was, they used to be able to plug your iron into the light fitting in the ceiling. Do you remember those? Or am I just really showing my age there? Um, yeah, so your lead would be dangling from, from the roof. Oh, but these were the kind that you'd put on coals to heat them up, wouldn't you? Oh, wait, I'm going back into... No, I, I don't actually... I've never used a nine that you heat up on coals. Um, but they make nice stores. Anyway, this is a pin cushion. And what... <laughs> diversifying. Um, what I, I, pin cushions are important, not just to keep you organised with the pins, but I think something important about a pin cushion is the base on it. Because you get an awful lot of, of novelty pin cushions, like pears and apples, that roll around all over the place, and then just not stabbable. Because when I'm sewing... I like to sew, 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 take the pins out, stab. I don't want to be finding the pin cushion. I just want to know that it's there. It's not going to fall over. And it's just, you know, it's going to be reliable. And um, this one's a great shape for that because it's got a really good base. That may sound a little bit silly, but if you do a lot of sewing and you use a lot of pins, you'll know exactly what I mean. I don't want my pin cushion rolling around all over the place. So it's only £12.99. I think that would make a lovely gift as well. I'm even thinking stocking fillers. I know it's not quite July yet, but um, that's only four, five months to go <laughs> till Christmas. Um, but you can never have enough pin cushions. I've, I've got them all over the place. I like to keep my needles separate to my pins because um, when you're taking needles out of a pin cushion, they're the ones that tend to spike you in the end. Um, so I know where they are. I'll have another one with safety pins on there. Those pins are a really important part of your sewing arsenal. So it's nice to keep them organised, I think. But that's a little bit of fun. And it's only £12.99, so pop that on your order. We have a back in stock for you. And this is a machine embroidery art by Alison Holt. Alison actually came in and um, right at the beginning, didn't she? And did some demonstrations. The, the book is just beautiful. And she actually takes you through, where's the photograph? She'll take a photograph. So there we are, that's the actual photograph. And then she traces the outline of where she's going to embroider. And she paints as well, and then machine embroiders over the top. So she'll take you through everything that she's used, all of the different shades and everything like that. But I, I like that step-by-step -step, um, kind of approach that's in so much detail. So they're not exact projects, but if you have a photograph of a tree, or this is the sunlit path, so isn't it got, oh, I want to be there. I want to be walking the dog down there with all the sun shining through. Um, so you take your photograph of whatever it is. I mean, it could be, I mean, that's so complicated, doesn't it? The mossy stream. Um, oh, yes, I want to be there as well. Bobbing, paddling in the water. Could be seascapes. I'm going backwards through the book, aren't I? Let me go this way. But some lovely, it's, it's a lovely coffee table type of book, so you can just browse through and look for inspiration and really appreciate um, all of the different um, imagery. Look at this, this is all free motion embroidery. Isn't that absolutely incredible? But you know, using, using paints and using embroidery thread, it really does give you such an amazing result. And you know, you, these are the kind of things that you may look at and think, no, I'd never be able to do that. Why couldn't you? Why don't you have a go? So take your photograph, trace over it, and then she paints, and then she embroiders. So you don't need to be particularly artistic because you're just taking a picture that you already have and, and tracing it. And even with your embroidery stitches, you're sewing over lines that are already there. So you, you know, you're not freehand embroidering or freehand drawing. I mean, you can do, you've got all of these different techniques again. You know, so it's, 
It's so pretty, isn't it? Something a little bit different as well. I've seen free motion embroidery um, books before and they're beautiful, but when you're adding, adding all of this colour and the paintwork with it as well, you have alliums in the garden. They, they grow up in between um, um, like paving stones. They just keep popping up. They're amazing. Look at the movement in this though. You know, I, I would imagine Really, it looks like a photograph. Well, it was a photograph once upon a time, but even the froth, and that's you can see there, it's just scribbling. So, you're not even going in any particular direction. The, these are so you've got a smoothness to the rock. Look at the froth on the waves there, it's so realistic. I might buy one of these, you know, I'd love to have a go at that. It's the time, isn't it? I would imagine these are very time consuming and sometimes that's exactly what you want. Oh, somewhere to just lose yourself. These could be places where you've been on holiday. It may be the view that you have from your holiday cottage or your back garden. Oh, look at the skies. Oh, and what a lovely gift this would make if, you're, if you have a picture of um, where the happy couple first met or the wedding venue. What a, an amazing gift. Maybe you've got a special birthday coming up and you just want a very special gift. We don't, um, we don't really give gifts in our family, only to the kids at Christmas time. And, um, but when we do have something special coming up, my, my sister got married uh, a few years ago now, but when... You know, you're of a certain age, you've been in a relationship for a while, you've got everything that you want in the house, there's got everything that you need. Um, how about just creating something amazing? I made smocked cushions for my sister for a wedding present. And it's not so much giving the gift of the project, it's, it's the gift of the time it's taken you to make it and the love and the care that you put into it. I could lose myself in this book. Are you losing me now? Am I going? After a while, I'm, I'm there. I can hear the waves crashing on the rocks and smell the salty sea and hear the seagulls. And I'm there. 19, 1999, for goodness sake. 1999 is your price here. And that's a back in stock today. So we did sell out completely when our lesson was in previously. But uh, we've got some back for you. Right, shall we have a look at some fabrics? We've got fat quarters for you in abundance. Tilda Fat Quarters um, and two, um, two options for you here. So in each one of the packs there are five Fat Quarters. So this is the, the reds. I'm finding the, because I don't want to take them all, just finding them out so you can see what, what they are. Similar to me blouse, are they not? Um, £22.99 is your price for those. Tilda is such a lovely quality. That, that, now you don't see them. Now you see them. Now you don't see them. Um, it's such a lovely quality of fabric. <laughs> yes, it was too much coffee. <laughs> I don't normally drink caffeine. <laughs> I'll be asleep by the end of the fourth hour. Um, but lovely quality. So you've got um, a, a very fine um, thread and lots of them, which gives you a smoothness to the fabric and it gives it a lovely drape as well. So it's, it's nice to invest in a little bit of quality, isn't it? These are £22.99 and that's the small red. So on a similar vein, and these are the Bon Voyage um, collections, which um, Tony designed around inspiration that she saw when she was on her travels. So she was thinking, and these are quite new designs as well. She was thinking, well, we're not allowed to travel at the moment. Then she put together something that reminded her of, the, of those days. Do you remember when we used to travel? Um, so these are the small blue flowers. And again, we've got five pieces there in total for £22.99. Then, Something a little bit different with these fat quarters. I love this type of fabric. It's, it's kind of rustic and natural and organic. I love working with Hessian as well. Um, so in here, I'm taking them out. I might even sew with them in a bit. This is, it's like um, an oatmeal kind of colour. Loose weave on here. Um, perfect if you're making bags or aprons or storage boxes or something to keep all your gardening bits and bobs um, or if you're covering um, mugs and I'm thinking mug rugs and hugs and um, 
tea cozies and coffee hug mug rugs kind of thing. Um, or like covering, covering glass jars with the candle inside would be a nice idea as well, in which case you don't even need to sew. Tell you what I, d what I did in one of my books. Um, we've got, we haven't got anything to can. I can wrap a piece of fabric around, have we? But if you, actually these are tied up with string, don't throw that away either. I used, can I cut into these? Let's see what we've got. I've got some scissors, I'm going to need those. Um, how about a coffee cup? We can cover a coffee cup, can we not? One of the, the big plastic one, that one, lovely. That's got coffee in it. Oh, that's, oh okay, that's already got coffee in it. An empty one. Thank you very much. No oh, it's got the brand written all over it and the price and everything. You were there at six forty-five this morning. Honestly, let's see what we can do here. No sewing. A little bit. A little bit of ironing. Let's see what we can make. Well, we could do a bit of sewing. Let's put. We can put a little bit of applique on here. May thinks. So you, you can iron um, hessian or burlap, as they say, across the pond, um, but it's a bit smelly because basically made out of string. It's what they used to do potato sacks with originally. Right, so let's... Did that yesterday? The iron's just spitting all over the place. Um, right, so... We'll do that. If you wanted to make sure that you're cutting your hessian in exactly a straight line, you can pull these threads out. So if you pull one through, because they're, they're quite strong, and then you're left with a row of holes like a ladder where you need to cut. So I can do that because that's not cut straight either. So let's do that. This is the fabric that is ideal for making those rolled up flowers that I attempted to do the other week and lost the will with it. So let's do this. So I can cut down here. Maybe not use your best scissors with hessians. Um, maybe use a bigger pair of scissors would be better, wouldn't it? Get a bigger pair. We've got a we've got a oh, we've got a scissor box now. And we've got, oh, we've got labels and everything. Big scissors, that's the box, you can't see it, can you? That's our box for big scissors. For big girls and boys. And then we have a box for small scissors. Do we have a box for small scissors? Oh, we've got the carousel for small scissors. We are organized. And then we have a Millwood caddy for rotary cutters. Don't throw these bits away because some of these have got quite long pieces of string on them. And you find it does get dusty. And so the hessian is a little bit smelly, but that's just the, the nature of the stuff. Now this is shaped, so let's see how that's going to go. That's fine like that. Let's chop this off here. And I'm going to stick that on so it's not going to be something that's removable. I'm just going to fray a little bit down the edges because I think that looks nice. And then like that. Have we got, have we got any glue guns left? Because that I think would be ideal. I do have a glue gun but it's not the ones that, that we have so I thought maybe Maybe we'll have a look at the one that we've got. So let's have a look how we're looking now. So that wraps around there. That's that's there, like that. That's that's about maybe a little bit maybe a little bit wide. I'll trim that down a little bit. Making such a mess in here, but there again, I normally do. I'm just going to trim that down a little bit because it was a little bit too deep. Right, then I'm going to, I know my thread is pink on here. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around to stop it fraying anymore. Don't want any more fraying from this one. So that'll stop it. 
Thank you very much. Right, so there's my glue gun. My glue cap. My glue. Please cap. Glue for the glue gun cap. I love working at Sewing Street. Everyone's so helpful. Kat, who is um, directing and camera operating, is, as we speak, rummaging through boxes trying to find me some glue for this glue gun. Above and beyond, I think. Not that, OK. Um, so I've got my... Excuse me, just a second. I'm just going down here and I'm coming back because I think I've got some in my box. Got one. OK, thank you. This is what happens when you make things up as you go. Anyway, I'm zigzagging around here. I can go a bit longer and wider on that one. Um, I'd normally use the same colour because I don't really want to see these stitches. It's literally just to stop any more of those threads coming out. So I know this is pink, but you don't want to sit and watch me change threads, do you? So just all the way around the edge. Snip those off. So that'll stop that from fraying anymore. Then I think we shall have... We're going to have a heart in the middle because... Just, just like hearts, really. Um, so that kind of size would... Whoop, not that angle. Would work like so. Oh, a bit more of a point in the middle, I think, for that one. So that's that. I'm going to glue that on. Are we ready? Yeah. I wouldn't normally, to be honest, I would normally use um, Bonder Web, but I, I think I've been cheeky enough asking for glue and glue guns and things that were not intended to be demonstrated this morning. Let's do it like that. So, but if you, you know, maybe it's, oh, a decorations for a wedding, um, or you've got a, a christening, a big birthday party, when we're eventually allowed to have people around, um, you could be decorating your garden. This is such a quick and easy way of, um, of making things a little bit more personal. So I wouldn't normally be covering a coffee jar, coffee cup kind of thing, um, but jam jars. So let us, oh, oh. We could have got it from anywhere, not necessarily that, that coffee shop. Works just as well with Costa Coffee and McDonald's Coffee or any other kind of coffee outlet. So that's stuck down there like that. A little bit more on, ooh, on there. That would do. And then these bits, I'm just going to tie around like that or oh. so do you know it's it, it's true isn't it hannah um who is in my ear producing at the moment was saying you know when you, when you search for things wedding related the price tends to go up i don't know why well i do know why it's because people pay it um so to make your own decorations for the garden or for the so not everyone wants this kind of look but it's just nice um Picnic kind of look, isn't it? I, I, I just like this rustic, organic, natural kind of feel. You can add buttons and things like that. You could tie that all the way around and make something a little bit different. But and it's also a way of, um, if you've got lots of odds and bits and bobs and things. So if you've got um, a, a random selection of different kind of mugs or um, I, I, I get uh, recyclable, recycled paper cups and bamboo plates when we're sitting outside, so it's all recycled stuff. Um, but if they're all different shapes and sizes, then you can cover them all so they all look the same. You could maybe wrap your cutlery up in that. Um, so it's not exactly a napkin, but that kind of thing. So you wrap up your cutlery and everything's kind of... Uh, all the same, so to speak. Let me just, uh, so I'm just unplugging my glue gun so that doesn't drizzle everywhere. 
If you want to go for the Lugan, by the way, it's £10.99. That's a nice little size, isn't it? Um, it does get really, really hot, so if you haven't used one before, don't go anywhere near that glue while it's melted. So invest in a pair of tweezers while you're there as well. You will need refills, and it's worth ordering those at the same time um, because you will run out of glue at some point. So it's well worth adding those. Those are so bitty. We do have a bin. Yes, in one. There's 10 in a pack of the refills and they're only £2.99, so pop those on your order. Looks okay, that, doesn't it? Yeah, that was an impromptu little no-so project. Right, so that is, um, in that fat quarter set, um, you've got the gingham, there is hearts, you have the hessian, and you have the... Snowflakes. I didn't realise there were snowflakes till you look closely. But all of those make Christmas cups. Um, all of those are twelve pounds and ninety nine pence. We do have others available for you, but they all kind of go really well together. This is the only one with the hessian in the bundle. Um, no point in folding these up, really, is then I've chopped into them. Right, and. Um, these are similar kind of fabrics, but without the hessian. Um, so here you've got the spot and the gingham, a white spot and the hearts. Um, and again, if you're, you could do something like that. Um, I'm thinking bunting around the garden, um, outdoor, maybe cushions to go on your garden furniture um, or table runners. Uh, to, to me, this, this is outdoorsy kind of fabric. Um, gardening bags, kneeling cushions, aprons and that kind of thing. Just £12.99. Oh, I was going to do so much in this hour, wasn't I? Got, got a bit distracted with Hessian. <laughs> And this is the final bundle, so we're, we're off to Paris for this one. So, Viva oh, this is so sweet. Oh. Um, <laughs> we've got the stamps, you have the, the uh, French wording, and then a calico type in two different weights, a fabric, and then you've got the white spot in there as well. So five fat quarters, again, for your £14.99. So that's only about £3 a fat quarter, which is... Um, which is great. I like I like that fat quarter. I like fat quarters because they're they're already coordinated, so you don't have to worry about putting colours together. But maybe you don't want to buy yards and yards of, of natural fabrics like that. You just want a little bit ideal for you. We have two <coughs> excuse me. Um, take two fat quarter books by Wendy Gardner. So shall we take a look first of all at home? So she's put together. Um, projects for you to use around your home, useful projects, but all using only a fat quarter or two fat quarters of fabric. So again, small achievable projects. This would be a great book for a beginner because they're easy to sew projects, but you're going to find them useful as well, like with the oven gloves and pin cushions, little cushions, there's bowls, and there is different techniques in here as well. And in the back there, you've got all of your full-size patterns too. Remember to go for your light box if you don't want to chop those up. Did you notice those books of mine in the back there? This is um, Two Fat Quarters Gifts. So same deal, just using two fat quarters of fabric or less. Don't rush out and buy lots of fat quarters thinking you can only use fat quarters. They're basically small pieces of fabric. Um, and some of these, even from fat quarters, you're going to have some left over as well. So this book has been designed, I was going to make that one, and um, has been designed as, uh, with projects in mind for you to give as gifts. So eye mask, kind of thing that you wouldn't normally buy for yourself or make for yourself, I think. Look at the little dress. And again, just using two fat quarters. Uh, Christmas crackers, little bags and pouches, all very simply explained, simple projects for £9.99. Um, right, what else have we got? Oh, I'm, I'm being such a challenge now, am I? I can, I've got 12 to 15 minutes to do a demo. Right, OK, then I'm going to make that roll. Um, I'm going to use the leftover fabric that I have here. I may not made it, make this exactly to size because by the time I've measured all of that, my 10 to uh, 12, well, 12 to 15 minutes, was it? 
12 to 15 minutes would be gone. So let me just check how she's done it. She's done that, that goes in there, that's there, that's there. Okay, we can do that, that's not a problem. Mine may be a different size because I said I'm not actually measuring. So I'm going to need my ruler. And I'm going to use, oh, I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use a bit of the check as well. 12 to 15 minutes or not, I can't work with creased up fabric, so I've got to iron that. Right, I think I only need a little bit of that by the looks. And I've still got pink thread in that machine, but, you know, I'm over it now. Right, so I'm looking at that thinking we need... Oh, I need some fleece on the back of one of those as well, I think. Ooh, H640 is out of stock. I'm not sure if Wendy's used it on there, but rotary cutter. Oh, for rotary, cu rotary cutter on the website. Rulers on the website. And I'm reckoning that would be... Let's do it that big. So that's what I have there. Then that's going to get chopped off nice and straight there. I may be wasting a little bit of fabric, but, you know... So that's going to be the length of my roll, fold in half, that's going to be about there. All of the correct measurements are in the book. Right. 8640 on the back of this one. So we'll have the snowflake as the outside and the hearts as the inside. Um, 40 in here like so. So again, we are, we are out of stock of this, but uh, keep looking on the website because we're bound to get it back in again at some point. You could just use interfacing. And actually with this fabric, you might not need anything. I just think it gives it a little bit of an oomph. Like a bit of an oomph. So hot iron with steam for your H640. That, 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 and there. And across there, like so. I will need a piece of elastic. So I'm just, I'm just in the cellar. Piece of elastic and some ribbon. Oh, I've got ribbon somewhere. Where have we got ribbon? I don't want blue. I've got some grey ribbon somewhere. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. It's on the floor. Just down here. There. There. Right. We'll need a couple of pieces of this as well. We might even get to finish this, unless the needle drops out of my machine again, that is. That needs to be about that wide. Like that, like that. And then I'll need one piece which looks about that big. So when Wendy has put all of the correct measurements in the book, so and that bit needs to be about that big. Well, that's not very square. The thing with gingham fabrics, it's um, about that. It's woven, so that should be a straight line. Mine's a little bit twisted. Right, then we are going to sew the ends of these over just to make them nice and neat. So I'm folding that over once, fold it over again, and sew wouldn't normally do pink. Oh, wouldn't normally do a zigzag either. Ah, uh, there we go. So that's just to make the ends of this neat. You'll see why, why in just a second. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to sew it up, aren't I, you silly devil? Oops, sew down the edges to make that. That's it, that's what I'm doing. I thought the thread was undone for a second. So that's the sew down the ends, and we're going to turn that the right side out. And the same with the other piece that I cut like that, so that way this is gonna look so good i think 
that needs to be a little bit narrower. And again, I'm rushing a little bit if you just joined us because I have been set a challenge. And I am, I am going to beat this challenge, so it's going to be a bit of speedy sewing. And I'm not going through exactly the... <laughs> I've got so much stuff down. I put the ironing pad down here in between my foot and the foot pedal, so I'm trying not just to stop the pedal from slipping all the way to Nuneaton. It's, um, I'm stepping over stuff as well. Right. So is that sewn down? Yep, that's sewn down. That's, is that a flap? That's sewn down, that's a flap. Lovely. So this one is the inside. So that's going to be a pocket across the bottom there. I'll have a pin or two in that. And there we go. So that's just sewn across the bottom and it's got some dividing pockets in it as well. This is just a flap that goes across the top that's going to keep the brushes in place. Or pencils or whatever it is you put in there. Crochet hooks maybe. So that goes there. That's not quite in the middle and I know I'm rushing but I've got to have that central haven't I? So that goes there. Then we have a piece of elastic across here. And that's going to be, uh, I'm going to sew down here and through the elastic. I'll just make sure that's straight. So that's going to help to keep things in place. Like so. And then finally, before, oh, oh, it is a broken pin. And there. And the final piece before we start putting this together is a ribbon. I've only got grey, but it kind of goes. And that is going to go there. That may be a little bit long. Does that go there? Yeah. So I'm talking to myself now. Well, actually, I think we might do that. I think I might change it up a bit. I'm going to do it that way. Like so. OK, so I'm going to sew across here to hold that down. I'm going to sew across here and the ends of this, and then we'll sew dividing lines down here to make some pockets. Right, so elastic in there. Across the bottom, then we can start taking pins out so we're not manoeuvring around pins. this end that. and then just straight across the bottom of this one and um, sew over the ribbon at the same time no that's got to be on the side so I'm talking to myself and everything there, and then this one will go on the side this is rather a long one actually I think this is longer than the one in the book, but maybe you can adapt them, have them any length you like. So maybe knitting needles you want to keep in here. Right, now I'm not going to mark on there because I want to be quick. Those pins can come out of there. You can go back in your pin cushion. Um, I'm going to do a dividing line down the centre. So down here, down here, down here. This book, by the way, there's only 17 of them left. So, thread's coming down, no, how long have I got on this challenge? Six minutes, six minutes, no problem, in you go, oh, long thread. So just at the top of the pocket I'm going to reverse to make that a nice strong seam and then we'll skip over to the elastic section and just go over that a couple of times. So the elastic is divided at the same points as the pocket. So another one here. Dawn's message in morning, Dawn. <laughs> 
She says, it's great fun, it should be a regular thing. Dare Debbie. Oh, don't dare me and don't double dare me. Because I'll do it, you know, I'll do it. I just need an espresso every morning. <laughs> <laughs> right, this one. Ooh. Remember, we're on for four hours today, and we will be for every day from now on. Yay, even more sewing. More challenges. I meant sewing challenges, not a, not a challenge of working with these lovely people. It's never a challenge. Right, just over the elastic bit. Pins can come out. No. Right. Oh, no, one more. One more to do. I'll, I'll snip up all these threads afterwards. And over to the elastic bit. Right, then let's put this thing together. So that's what we have at the moment. Oops, snip, 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 like that. So my brushes are going to go in here. They're kept in place. Let me put a pen, oh, pen in there just to show you. So that goes in there and then it's kept in place there. So we can go some really long things. I don't have a knitting needle, but I think that might be too long. Oh no, there you go. So that can go in there and that goes in there. Then the whole thing rolls up. Um, but let's put the back of this on first. So make sure that everything's tucked inside and your ribbon's out of the way so you don't sew over it. Right sides together, all the way around with the gap in one side so I can turn it. So I'll leave the gap in the other side, I think. And when to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just made the stitch a little bit longer on this one because um, it seems the thicker the layer of fabrics, the slower your machine seems to go for some reason. So throw it across the bottom. Again, make sure that those ribbons are tipped out of the way. Needle down, turn around. Oh, I want to make sure as well that I don't include those little flaps at the top anyway in that seam allowance. I should have double checked on that. Oh, didn't leave a gap. Leave a gap here. So we'll leave a gap there. I'd normally leave that in the side where there's not so many layers of fabric, but I forgot. The gift book, now we're down to single figures, by the way. That's the book that the, uh, the proper one of these with measurements is in. Right, so I'll snip off the elastic. Oh, we've got two minutes, right. So snip off the corners. We'll turn this the right side out. Oh, 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 a bit caught on my watch. And let's poke those corners out there. Oh, good, I didn't catch it. So poke that out there, poke that out there. I'm just going to get a, oh, I've caught that's in the seam, but that's fine. That goes out there, that goes there. So I've got that. Then I'm just going to use a stiletto to poke the corners out, which are available on the website. Put that in there, poke that one out there, and poke this one, oh. Now, if you don't have any H640, but you do have some wadding, um, I would use that instead. So, um, maybe with a little um, 505 spray to hold it down while you're using it. Um, or just some nice firm interfacing would work. So, let's give this a quick press. Like so, and then the bottom piece, it'd be lovely if it was quilted. Um, or, you know, allowing, um, or pu putting a little bit of um, 
applique on there might be nice, personalise it somewhat. Now I'm going to sew all the way around the edge. And that's going to keep everything flat, but it'll also, where's my pedal gone? Um, give it a nice professional finish, keep everything in place and close the hole that I left. So move the ribbon out of the way this time. I can't believe I'm going to finish something. I very rarely finish anything here. Oh, I might, oh no, I'm a minute over. Oh well. <laughs> I've got to finish it now because I'm very nearly there. Little down. Nicholas's message, hello. Um, we should do double, double dare, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> to sew a, a, a what bag? A tote bag whilst using a pogo stick. That I would, I would be well up for using a pogo stick. It's just that the ceiling actually here is is um, there. Oh hello. <laughs> yeah. So I, and they will bash my head. Um, Sheila's messaged on the Sewing Street fans page, and she says, <laughs> "Love it when Debbie goes rogue on the live shows." <laughs> And, oh, the drawstring bag and machine cover panel demonstration she would like to know. I can't remember. We're trying to find out. We'll try and find out and let you know, Sheila. Finished. Right, let's see if it works then. So in here, I know I've got lots of bits of threads, which is really annoying. Um, what have I got that's long? Then you've got Mirola. Maybe a couple of pens. So there could be makeup brushes, maybe. So that can go in there and that can go in there. The stiletto can go in there. Nice long ruler. Um, I haven't got any of the long stuff. I wonder if I could. Might, no, might not roll up. Uh, so that goes over there to keep the ends in place. And then the whole thing will roll up that way. And that goes around there and ties in a bow on this side there. There. One completed challenge. First time I've ever completed one, but there you go. Um, but remember, you do have all of the proper instructions and everything and the measurements in, uh, in Wendy's book but we don't have very much stock left. Right, I used uh, the Alpha Rotary Cutter and we've had a message about that actually. Alpha's the one that I choose to use. I don't know, I'm not saying it's better than any other brand, it's just the one that I'm used to, so I always go for an Alpha Rotary Cutter. Now June's messaged in and she says she loves the shows, thank you. Always makes a laugh. That's to brighten up your day. And she loves my projects as well. Thank you. But she has a question. Right, June. I always use the yellow alpha rotary cutter. I do. Um, she received hers a week ago. And she's struggling a bit. Hmm. What, are you, what are you struggling with? Have you used a rotary cutter before? Let me show you. Don't have to cut quickly. Take your time with it. So use your ruler. If it helps, use at a slight angle away from the ruler. So if you're a little bit wobbly when you put the blade up against the ruler, just tilt it over very slightly, not 45 degrees, not that far, but just slightly away. And a little bit of pressure and just take your time. Um, make sure that you're holding, <laughs> make sure you're holding the ruler the right way around so it doesn't slip for a start. Um, when you're using your ruler, spread your fingers out. Don't put your hand down on the ruler like that because it's more likely to stick. Um, so you get more surface area by doing it this way and keep your fingers away from the edge. And again, just take your time. Always remember to lock the blade out, uh, lock the blade in when you're not using it. Um, 
I, I find it easier with the Ulfa. There's, it, it's like a, a one touch lock. So unlock it, lock it, it's as easy as that. And if it's easy, you tend to remember to do it more. Um, but again, just take it easy, slowly. Don't have to cook quick. You can cook quick, but just go slowly with it. And that slight angle, always cut away from you. Um, I will allow you to cut this way. I will allow you to cut across there, but I will not let you cut this way. Um, these are incredibly sharp blades. Even when you've blunted them, they're incredibly sharp. Make sure um, your cutting area is clean. Even if you've got glue on here, it can affect the blade. And never, ever, ever um, go over pins. If you go over pins, it'll take a little nick out of the blade. And then when you're cutting, you'll have the occasional thread that it hasn't cut through, which is infuriating. Um, so take care of them and um, put, them, put them somewhere safe when you're not using them. Make sure as well, because this happens sometimes, that the screw's tied uh, tightened. Um, the more you use them, this can work its way loose a little bit and then you get kind of a, a wobbly blade. So just make sure that's, that's nice and tight um, so you, your blade isn't wobbling at all. So I hope that's helped a bit, June. If you've got any more problems, let me know what the problem is and, um, and we shall, we'll sort you out. That's what we like to do. I'm just moving pins so I don't cut over it. We are almost at the end of June, so I want to show you the flower of the month as well. Um, where are we? We're over here, aren't we? And it's roses. This is the flower of the month. So last month it was lilies. Uh, sorry, lily of the valley. And this month you have roses. So that's a 12 inch square panel um, just with the roses alone. I've made bags and I've made cushion covers using that. But then you're also getting all of these fabric strips. So they're two and a half inches wide and they pick up on the colors in your, um, uh, in your rose panel. So if you're quilting, you can actually use these as borders to make that 12 inches a little bit bigger. If you're giving these as a gift, you've also got the labels down there as well. Um, so just to let you know who's, who's actually made your quilt, if it's a quilt you're making. Um, I've used, when I made bags before now, I've used the strips to make the handles or just in one piece as it is there without even cutting out the strips, you can make a lining for a bag as well. Um, so I'll go for a couple of them. I mean, with, with cushions, to be honest, you don't just have one anyway, do you? So go for a couple if you're making a pair of cushion covers, which would be lovely. Um, if you're going for a, a, a bag option, you can easily make um, a little tote bag out of something of that size. And of course, if you're collecting, you've already got your Lily of the Valley from last month. We're almost in July. So when's the next one? Maybe the next one's out next Monday, is it? I don't know, I should find out. Um, so this is June's and then July's will be out early next month because it's, it's July, is it Wednesday? Going quickly, isn't it? Going to the zoo on Thursday, can't wait. Going to take the girls to the zoo. We've got appointments and everything. We have, you must have seen these before. If you haven't, these are the cutest doorstops. Uh, we've bundled uh, everything that you need to make both of those. Um, the only thing that you don't get is the weight to put in the bottom. And we are adding to these month by month as well. So you have the florist and the haberdashery. We've been asking you what, uh, what you'd like to see. What, what are the shops that you have on your high street? We've had um, um, the, the butcher, the bakers, the patisserie, the pet shop, um, a coffee shop, um, a hairdressers, a barbers. Um, what else have we had? There was a, we've already got the same, we should have a Seven Street Surgery one, shouldn't we? <laughs> um, but come and let us know if you have any particular requests, shoe shops maybe, um, a handbag shop. <laughs> but we're going to be adding to these one or two every single month. So you could have a whole row of your own Sewing Street uh, stores um, on your windowsill or on your mantel shelf, or of course, they make great doorstops as well. The demonstration for these was on the 17th of June. Um, so take a look on YouTube and um, you can go back and watch all of the previous shows there. In the bundle, you will have your full instructions. And there is toy filler. You may need a little bit more of that, to be fair. And you've got your polyester wadding, which has been designed to go in the roof, so you can embroider through there as well. You'll have loads of that one left over. 
and of course all of your fabric panels to make these as well there are two panels um, to make each of the door stops all for £29.99 it's a great price isn't it um, now the pellets that we use on uh, in the basis here they're on the website as well so take a look on sewingstreet.com but we don't have very, very many of those left so if you need the pellets then check out your baskets as quickly as you can um, also low in stock um, if you saw the a4 light box that we brought you yesterday um, we have three of those left so if you're tracing patterns out of a book as you saw with Delphine in the previous hour then an A4 light you're going to I think they're 32.99 you're going to need something like that too it just makes your life easier and you're not holding things up against a window or your, your TV set to try and trace through them um, so take a look again on the website or if you can't get online then they give us a ring on 0800 001 4433 and just say to the operator I'd like that A4 light box that was on yesterday's show and they will be able to help you out okay that's those Let's pop those there those there right now cushions coming up in the next hour Sorry, so tidy now. these are <laughs> do you know we're going we're going live for four hours a day what what we could do is go live for half an hour in the morning show you what we've got and things sell out anyway we don't need to be here for four hours do we um, these are coming up in the next hour. We will still go ahead with the show and Delphine with the demonstrations for the benefit of those of you that have already bought this bundle because we only have three remaining. So we are going to go to a quick break. I think in that break the rest of these may disappear. So do join us for a, an, an hour of sewing. There's one left now. Um, an hour of sewing in the next hour. No, no shopping, just an hour of sewing. It's going to be fun, isn't it? Um, and uh, that'll be with Delphine, who's just come back in the studio. So I'm going to go and put the kettle on quickly because I do not need more coffee. We'll have a bit of decaf, I think, this time. Um, and do join us again in a couple of minutes. We'll see you shortly. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I always just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say don't get disheartened, take your um, learning journey slowly, don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt, build up your skills 
um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the sewing with us. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Hi there, welcome back to Sewing Street to number seven. Delphine again. Hello again, show. thank you for having me back. Um, do you know, we have, um, have we still got one left and we've sold out now? It was sold out. Um, the Ooh, <laughs> the bundles that we were bringing you in this hour were for the um, the two cushion covers. So you've got the Highland Cow and the Unicorn. We have completely sold out. So sorry about that. It's those of you coming in early. Um, in the kit, there is everything that you need to create these two cushion covers. But we're so in street. We're going to carry on anyway. We're not sending Delphine home and and flicking through miles of fabric for the hour we are going to do the demonstration lovely um, so if you got any questions should we make it a, a nice relaxed chat yeah that would be lovely yeah. yeah just like so, sewing at home it's get to know delphine hour come and okay. ask the questions yeah keep them coming who and earth are you what are you doing here where do you come from oh that's a lot of questions <laughs> <laughs> what a time. No, let's, let's well tell us about yourself Okay, so, oh, um, I'm Delphi. I, uh, I live locally. Uh, I live in Warwickshire with my husband and my two little boys. Um, I'm out of homeschooling today, though, which is quite nice. I'm doing my own little <laughs> thing. Um, I love, as you know, I like to quilt. I like painting. I like drawing. And as you know, uh, from a few shows ago, I also enjoy doing some needle felting as well. So how did you get started? Oh, um, well, I, uh, as when I was younger, I was always uh, doing um, colouring and painting. And that's how I actually started, actually. Before sewing, I was more doing my art and my drawing, really. Right. And it wasn't until I did my A-levels uh, that I went from the, the, the fine art side of doing your art A-level to the textile room. And as soon as I started doing textiles, and we used to do loads of things from um, silk painting and... Uh, quilting and bag making and clothes making but I, re I was really interested in more of the soft furnishings and the fabrics and colours and then I um, had a bit of a break I'd say about about eight to ten years of being in the military and then I came back to sewing uh, when I had Louis my youngest he's now five he was five last week my Aww. baby and uh, yeah and I just started uh, sewing uh, bits and pieces for 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 Louis you know as as you do with most young parents out there they just uh, when they want to start sewing they start sewing for friends or, or, or family and then a friend of mine actually said oh what, what I can't remember what it was I made she said oh you know that's actually quite good you should do a bit more of that and then set up a Facebook page and 
So how, here I am. How come you've ended up Next on the to telly? You. Yeah, which is really surreal being here with Debbie Shaw, I can tell you now. So very, you know, this is an honour to be here with you, Debbie. Oh, thank so thank you. you for having me. Oh, yeah. it's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, I'm just like, it's nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> but they not give me in, wobbly chairs yeah, here. Not sitting on the chair no, now. No, I'm standing up for the rest of the hour. You'll have achy feet. <laughs> I've got, so, got my flats on. <laughs> yeah, so that's me in so, a nutshell. So the, the Highland Cone Unicorn, the, yeah. these are your designs? All my designs, yeah. So uh, when I saw the uh, actual... We haven't got... Well, because it's all gone. When I saw the... Uh, the Tula Pink fabrics. Um, I've seen a few people on the uh, the Sewing Street fans page and also Instagram page that they get them and all they want to do is stroke them. They don't know what to do with them. I was a little bit like that as well, yeah. but then I just knew that I wanted to use every single colour because they're so colourful, and um, so that's why I came up with this design. And I think the Highland Cow and unicorns are just cool. They're yeah. just you know it's something bright and you can just do so many different things. Whether it can be you could repeat the block if you had quite a lot of the um, charm packs that you can uh, repeat the block and make it into a quilt or a wall hanging and you can just have loads of fun with it so and i did have really good fun doing this one i'd have to say as well before before you came in this morning i didn't actually realize that these were your own designs oh, wow. um, and i was saying to the team when we were prepping that they they're really lovely images they're not like cartoons yeah they're realistic thank you i know, I know you, unicorns aren't unicorns aren't real aren't they no. 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 What a show! Um, but it's, yeah. it's so they're so realistic. They're they're really lovely. It was really just are. it was just uh, just doodling. Um, as you know, as I said earlier, I really enjoy drawing. I do a lot of artwork. So uh, so to do art and sewing together is my match made in heaven. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this. But so I just played around with different ideas, and I really like the the um, the cow because it's just really fun. And this is just so girly and cool well, have, as well. Let's have a look. At a close bit of the girl. Can you put that underneath the upright one? Yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting better. Is that be okay? Is, well, is that upside down? No, that's right. Is that right? Yeah. I'm in the right spot. In the right spot. There we are. There you go. Perfect. So in the, even though it looks quite complicated, um, it's I've, do, I've done the drawing for you, so yes. you haven't got to worry about being an artist or being good at drawing, because as you can see when you get your instructions, all the drawing's all been done. So you're, it's like a jigsaw again, isn't it? You just yes, just a jigsaw and, puzzle. And put them together. Yeah. And, and what about colourways? Because I mean, all of the fabrics are heavily patterned. We do have um, fabric strips rolls on the mm. website if you love the pattern from this collection. But how, how do you decide where to put colours? I, as you can see, I separated them into, um, so that you've got all the different pinks. I think they're very clever of doing charm packs like that, aren't they? Yeah. In how they put all the colours together, even in the order. So again, it was it was quite, simple for me to come up with um, what I was going to use for the hair or what I was going to use for the horns. Um, so I just chose all the pinks and then all the greens and then for, for more uh, dominant features like the nose and the horn and the ears and, uh, and the, the face on the unicorn, um, you'd, I'd go a bit darker. So, but because all the colours, even though every piece of fabric as you see on the charm squares have got a different design on, but putting all the different strips together, it just works. It just looks cool, I think. Yeah. We've got the yeah. charm pack over there if you want oh, yeah. to, to show it. Am I allowed to open it? Of course you can. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Said it now. Do you want to pop that one under there as well so we can have a close up while you're well, you're struggling opening that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And exactly the same. Exactly the same. But again, the hair on the unicorns just well. All girls like unicorns, don't they? And just like really uh, long, and yeah. I just really wanted the colours to really stand out. And again, even though I'm only using, and I'll show you, come to do the pattern in a minute, it's just all, even though it's just all the strips all sewn on, um, sewn on top, it just looks really effective because of the different patterns within the within the uh, within the charms pack. Which I'll shall I move and show you that bit? So yeah, with the, this is this is what I mean. So as you can see, we're starting off with the top. And you've got all these different pinks. And so all I did really, and I think most of them, you do get one, you do get two of each. So that's where I sort of stopped there. So if you are, if you want to do it exactly the way I did it, from there, that's where I stopped with the, with the hair. Right. On both the unicorn and on the cow. And then I went to the next layer and I did all the yellows. But again, just using one of each. I like that one with the scissors. 
and again to the green and then I stopped again and then again with the blue and then I just came back to the pink just for the bottom of the of the unicorn because I just thought it would tie in a lot better there so it gave yeah. it a bit more balance so that's how I chose the colours okay yeah so where are we going to start yes definitely right so where's the pattern oh I've got my own here so ideally if you've got a light box I definitely recommend you use one of these to uh, draw out the pattern so I've already done, what did I do? Oh, I've already done those bits. So I'm going to demo just a couple of the pieces of how we put them together. And like I said, a lot of it's just the jigsaw, the, the um, putting it together at the end, which in the pattern you do actually have, remember it's not to scale though, you do have a little diagram of how all the pieces go together in, and in the order. So to trace them out, I've used a bond web. No. Just turn the intensity of the light down. It is a bit one. bright, isn't it? Oh, it. turned it off. There, that's, it. that's fine, good. isn't it? Can I go a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah, I can get away um, with that. The A4 light box, by the way, we've sold out of that now. Um, I've it's just it's just crazy busy. But we do have the A3 available for you. That's $64.99. So, as you can see, I've just put the bond web over the top. Now, make sure if you're using a bond web or an interfacing, you draw on the glue side. Otherwise, when you attach it, it will be in reverse. Which right. is not the end of the world, but um, because the the actual draw um, the actual drawing's not symmetrical, so so if you've gone for a couple of kits, you could actually make the unicorns facing each other. Yeah, yeah, good thinking. Very good. Um, Very clever. And don't use a heat erasable pen when you're tracing. No. <laughs> so when, uh, yeah, so when, in a moment we're going to uh, sew the strips together and how we actually struck each piece. And of course, I'm going to iron this onto the back. And then if you iron it onto the back with a heat erasable pen, you're going to have to start all over again because you're not going to know where, you've, where your uh, pattern is. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some messages on Facebook um, while you're just doing that. Um, Dawn. Oh, Dawn says, morning, Debbie. Love to see you this morning. A great start to the week as usual. Thank you very much. And uh, she says, it's weird to see two in the studio, but it's nice that we've got someone to talk to. It is a bit hard, isn't it? We spent months in the studio just on our own. And even when, when you've been in Delphine and some of the other designers, you've been on your own. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's quite, quite nice to have two people here. Don't feel lonely now. Um, Christine. Morning, Christine. Christine says, hi, girls. Did you see paracetamols for cleaning an iron? Yes. Do tell us again. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're, yeah, paracetamol. I'm definitely going to take this as my tip. Yeah. Um, this is Delphine's my tip. copyrighted tip now. Yeah. So um, if you get, the, the, as you described it quite well, the chalky type of paracetamol, you know when you iron, um, especially when you're doing a lot of applique, you get a lot of glue on your iron. It goes all black. And, uh, and, uh, and then when you go in to iron over a light fabric, some of that will come off onto the fabric and it goes all dirty. If you get a little um, of the just just normal paracetamol, but make sure it's the chalk one, iron on full heat, and then you rub it all over the top. So it takes tweezers, a maybe. I I use my fingers. <laughs> um, I know. Am I? Should I be saying this? I don't, but yeah, I just use my fingers. And um, so yeah, you rub it all onto the iron, and just give it a couple of seconds, and eventually it will start to melt and bubble away. And what that will do is form like a liquid, and it cleans your iron. And it I'm takes it all try off. That when I get home. That's, I've yeah. not heard of that one. Yeah, and so uh, no need. To, whereas I used to buy new irons, whereas now I don't need to. So yeah, just get your paracetamol in a, in a wet rag, and then it will Brilliant. clean it all up. If you have any top tips to share, then drop us a line on Facebook. Or That's not email. worked with that pen. I'm going to need just a normal buy though. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, morning, Pam. Pam says enjoying the show. Missed you falling off the chair, Debbie. It, it was. It wasn't exactly a fall off, but it was a big wobble. Um, <laughs> it was funny actually. Uh, my top tip is when using fleece is to put a piece of an older duvet cover, a cotton one, on the reverse side, especially if I decide to quilt the item I'm making. Uh, when, doing this, uh, seam, when doing the seams, I put greaseproof paper along the seams and sew and then remove afterwards. Two top tips from Pam, thank you very much. It's a top tip Monday. It hasn't quite got a ring. It has doesn't, it? no, it'd be top tip Tuesday. Top tip Tuesday, yeah. So here we are, I'm just going to get my little pieces. So I've already cut out um, a few of the pieces already um, just to save a little bit of time because I don't think you just want to watch me cutting out all the whole time. So pop those to one side. 
So now, a lot of the pattern is actually constructed by using quarter inch, sorry, not quarter inch, uh, one and a half inch strips of fabric. So as long as you can cut and sew in a straight line, it's actually quite simple. So just take one of your charm squares, that's how I'm going to do the hair here. Uh, let's use the rotary cutter, it's ideal because it's quicker. So I believe I did six strips for the, um, for the cow's hair. Sorry, I've got sticky hands. So I'm just going to use those two, I'll pop that onto a side and I've saved a little bit of this pink, I love this, this is really nice and bright. We'll have one of those, definitely have one of those. And so you will have enough in the, in the uh, charm pack to actually make both, both the cow and the unicorn. So and there's, you don't have to be too uniform either about where you put them. Um, so even if you put two together at the set, you know two together, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be in order. It don't have to be symmetrical. You don't have to be too uniform about it. There we are. So that's my six pieces cut out ready for the. I should have remembered to go over there. So I'm just going to sew each of these pieces right side together, and then just a quarter inch seam. And then so on and so on. Um, so, so nice and easy. Pennies so, dropping. So I'm just going to. So you're not sewing all of those individual pieces from a pattern. You're going to nope. join all strips together and then to make the a bigger piece of fabric. Oh. Yeah. So rather than just using the single squares, I'm actually just making a bigger piece of fabric to work from. Okay. Um, Iona says uh, morning. I'm just wondering if we could use Bosal for the Madison bag and on the faux leather instead of H640. Um, yes, you can do. Um, normally with the Bosal, as with H640, you iron from the top. Just make sure that on the faux leather bit you don't iron from the top. But you can put the Bosal on the back of it and give it a good blast of steam and the steam travels through and it will adhere to the, um, to the fabric. So yes, you can. And I've got lots of rounds of applause from Dawn. I think that might have been for finishing my challenge. Um, Sarah, hi Sarah, says hi Debbie and Delphine, loving hi. the shows and demos today. Um, we've got a message from Morag in Dumfries, hi Morag, uh, and she says morning both of us. Morning. Um, she loves her Sundays and Monday mornings, thank you very much for the fave lady, I wonder who that could be. Uh, she's had the weekend off and no phone calls, oh bliss. <laughs> She's got the early bird, and of course she's got the Highland cow and the unicorn. Lovely. Um, and she's sitting back now with a cuppa, washing her favourite ladies in action. Oh, that's a lovely that's message. Lovely, that's really Thank nice. You, Morag. That's really nice. So I've nearly completed the six pieces. That like said, just a quarter inch seam. And even if you are a bit wonky when you're doing, it doesn't matter because it will. Um, the, the lines get lost anyway within the um, yeah. pattern, so you don't have to don't worry if you are a little bit wonky. Okay. There we are. Is the iron on? Yes. Are we on? Oh, nearly ironed onto that then. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't have gone down well. We did send you a bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, put that there. And I'm just going to iron them flat. There so, again, with are. the strips, you said they don't have to be perfect, they don't have no, to be uniform. Just not at strips. all. Just strips fabric, and that's what you're left with. Right. Just your six, um, your six pieces. So did I do six? I did. So I did. I did another one. Let me just quickly uh, add another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We've got we've got ages. It's a good Nothing job. Nothing to sell. That machine no, yeah. has has a tune, doesn't it? It, it does. Always hums as you're sewing with it. Makes it very easy. So now you take your pattern piece and remember glue side down over the top and so I have done it so it will definitely fit and you can have it more over to one side more over to the other depending on what colours in the fabrics that you prefer. Do um, you have, when you're making things like this, do you, do you have things that go a little bit wrong or it doesn't work or it doesn't look right? 
yeah. before you end up with something that you're really happy oh, with? The idea is um, that I can't see through that. I think I've used the wrong pen. I have. Do you know what? You're going to sit. This is exactly how I make something. So now I'm going to copy. Wing it. I'm going to absolutely. <laughs> So use biro. That was um, a water, yeah. water erasable pen, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's gone. Oh well. Right here we go. So this is this is my challenge now. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we can do we can do this. So I find when um, when I'm designing, particularly with toys, if I'm designing a toy from scratch, um, I end up with I, I have actually a, a, an elephant that I made with the biggest head and the tiniest little body because it didn't quite work, but I can't throw them away. Aww. So I've got a shelf of misfits, things that didn't quite work. You know, their head's wrong size or they don't stand up or something's longer than the other. I think I, I tend I to them. mess around with different um, fabrics more so than the pattern. Once I, I tend to try and do a lot, a lot in the drawing first and then mm -hmm. I add a little bit as I go along. I'm not, not too bad. It's getting there. There we are. You need a really good pair of scissors as well when you're cutting this out. Uh, I don't recommend you use a rotary blade on this bit. Use a rotary blade to get your strips nice and... Um... You have a biro <laughs> Yeah, you I've it. got a biro now. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Hannah. Uh, so, here we go. I could have just saved myself the pain and just done it again, but... Oh, there we go. We like a challenge, don't we? We do like a challenge. Um, if you wanted to go for Bonderweb, by the way, this is a five metre roll. Um, I think we would have sold out of the small packets. It was early bird yesterday, wasn't it? Um, but I, it's, it's invaluable, particularly with the plique, isn't it? Mm. I know you can use your 505 sprays and things like that, but this gives a really good addition when you're layering them together. So. I think we're nearly there, you know. Showing off now. <laughs> This is luck. <laughs> Anything yeah. else you need as well, um, if you're new to us, from the sewing machine all the way down to pins, needles, threads, have a look on our website on sewingstreet.com. There we are, so that's those three. And that's that one. So this is where you definitely need the drawing. Uh, like I said, at least I can just about copy. There we are my own pattern can you see my hand shaking <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty it's, accurate you know. it's not bad yeah it's not bad there we go oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna take that yeah <laughs> i'll take that one lovely right okay hair done let's pop that there that's not far off is it Okay, so now we're just going to do exactly the same, but with the greens to make the the face, okay. the fu the furry face. Um, Linda's messaged it. Hello, and Linda says, loving the shows today. Um, a really good tip for cleaning iron from uh, for cleaning irons from Delphine. Oh, lovely! Uh, but she's just wondering. <laughs> What, what made you think, I'll take a paracetamol and try and clean the iron with it? Do you know, I think it just came, it, so, so I can't claim it as my tip. Oh, can I? No, you I have, am, no, I you have. have done. I have done. Um, I, no, I didn't just uh, put paracetamol on my iron. I don't think that would have gone down very well at home. No, I just, uh, I think I saw it somewhere. I've, I've read it somewhere, or I've seen it somewhere. And if you actually Google it, uh, or put it on YouTube, you, there's, there's videos. All right. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, but I've, I've claimed it now as mine. So how many pieces did I say in this one? Um, wasn't listening. <laughs> I'll, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you need eight pieces. So the, the, the actual way of making these is very similar in the unicorn as well. Um, the only difference is, is in the unicorn is um, with an eight strip, You'll sew two lots of four and sew those together, but that's all in the instructions. If you want to um, share any tips with us of your own, we ought to have a proper proper section, I think, for your top tips as well. Um, come through on the on the Facebook page on Sewing Street TV, or you can email us on studio at sewingstreet.com. So that's our Facebook page. Um, has Oh, has anybody tried the tip? Uh, we're being asked if you're using tinfoil 
uh, to sharpen scissors and pins. Does that actually well, What's work? that one? Pinking shears. Cut through tin foil. It's supposed to sharpen your scissors. Does it? Because things like pinking shears are really difficult to sharpen. Yeah. Apparently cutting through tin foil will do it. Brilliant. I'm going to try that one. I didn't know that one. Or using um, a metal scourer inside a pink cushion is supposed to help sharpen pins when you use them as well. Ooh. Yeah, never heard of that one before. I was also um, going to ask if anyone thinks of any other animals. All right. Because I, I thought a rooster would look quite good. Yes, because so, you've got all the feathery All the tails. feathers, yeah. Yes, that'd be amazing. Peacock would be nice. Oh, that would be lovely. I don't know, that'd be a bit hard to draw, though. Yeah. We'll give yeah. it a go. Give it a go. Um, a turtle has been suggested. A turtle. A hare. Stag. Stag. Stag's face would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be good. Any ideas? Come and let us know. Um, I'm getting better at sewing standing up. So not great, but I'm getting better. In our new studio, they're building the champagne bar at the moment, which is why it's been delayed. And I'm hoping for a sushi bar there as well, personally. By the spinny chair? Yeah, yeah. Lots of, lots of spinny chairs in our new studio. Uh, There's lots of joke chairs in our new studio. So I'm just sewing together the hair pieces now. I quite like this part in the pattern because it actually looks like it, doesn't it? So I use quite a lot of yes. that pattern in the unicorn. Yes, that's a good idea. And uh, sewing these last ones together. Your boy's interested in sewing. I wish. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I think I think as Louis, my youngest, as he, he he's quite creative. He does like to draw and. Um, and things like that. He, he likes playing and creating and yeah. uh, lots of make-believe. So I'm hoping that uh, he will. Um, he, he, when, we, when I was homeschooled in uh, Louis, he really enjoyed doing all the art projects and things, which I quite enjoyed as well. Whereas uh, Charlie, my eldest, no, no. What about, what about yours? My daughter is uh, addicted. It's taken her, it, well, it took her about 28 years to become interested in sewing. Um, and I can't stop her. So there's, so there's still hope then? 28 well, years? Yeah, 30 this year. Um, but yeah, she's, um, she, she, she works for me, um, so not so much at the moment because the nurseries aren't open at the moment. Right. Um, but she's um, getting through about an outfit a day. Really? She made two little girls' dresses yesterday. Actually prepping for a show that I've got next Monday. We've got a really nice um, modern children's clothing book. So she's made a couple of dresses for me. Oh, show. wow. Yeah, I got, got in from work yesterday. Dresses made, and there on, uh, on the mannequin was um, a toile for a little top with a tie back and just just make stuff. It's brilliant. Oh, lovely. My, my eldest, um, I always thought he would be the one who... Um, who was the sewer. It's funny, he made um, a fancy dress outfit for his daughter last year for Halloween, and he was ever so proud of it. He said, I've made a Halloween outfit. And I was thinking, you know, a wizard or something. He'd actually put a paper bag over her head and cut two eyes in it. <laughs> and it actually was really scary. It was really scary. I'm uh, not interested. Oh dear, what have I done there? <gasps> We're out of bobbin thread. Yeah. Well, at least your needle didn't drop. No, I, I can do it. I can do it. We may have some spare ones. I didn't like so that. So when we get a new studio, we'll be a lot more organised. Like if not... Uh, yeah, we're running out of the little pink thread as well. Well, while we're doing that, then, I'll quickly trace over the... Um, the face. Give with my biro. No, we haven't got a bobbin. Sorry, so, you're going to have to fill up your own bobbin. I, I can fill it up. So we've got, no, we've got red. That's not going to work, is it? Uh, where's my paper? Sorry, this is a bit rustly. So, is that not too bright? Into the light box a bit. And... It's having a run around. <laughs> uh, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Ooh! Oh, I need one of these. Which is my biro? I had one. Oh. A choice of four pens, look. So try and be is... Um, that's not going to work. It doesn't like that one. <laughs> oh, dear. Have I got you to cut, cut you that want to again? Show it? I've got, I've got my 
Not there, that was the one I used before. So I'm rummaging in my box, so excuse the noise. I've got another fire up there. Oh, lovely. Um, I know it's lovely. Yeah, perfect. We're, we're oh, back, we're back in got, the game. I've got a sharpie. Are you all right with that? Yeah. So try and be as accurate as you can with the drawing. Like I said, you haven't got to just go o just go over the lines. There is quite a lot, especially in the face piece, but this is what's going to make it really effective. Okay. So, um, as you said, I'm going quite quick, but if you can at home, just take your time a little bit more. I think a light box... Um it's really important for tracing off patterns like this, mm. isn't it? It just make, makes life so much easier. Um, and if you have patterns in a book, maybe it means that you don't have to chop into the book or tear pages out. Um, and you can really see clearly through that, more so than really holding clear. it up against the window. Because on days like today, it's probably darker outside than it is in. Mm. And it moves around. Yes. <laughs> it moves around too much. You must turn that off. And Bev has mm. sent a request. Hi, Bev. And she says, um, should I get a hippopotamus? Hippopotamus is a nice idea, oh, isn't it? Oh, that would be nice. It? Yeah. I'm thinking now. Hmm, I'll do it. Oh. Yeah, we, I like we, that one. We think she means on the cushion. And she just said she wants a hippopotamus. OK. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, keep them coming. A donkey would be nice. Uh, a donkey? Yeah. Yeah, that would be sweet, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you could You're do drawing that it in your mind now. Aren't I you? am. Yeah, I'll be I'll be going home and doing some drawings this afternoon to come up with some <laughs> new ideas. Right, I'm going to see if this fits. Next time, can we have more stock? If and you just uh, joined us, we sold out of everything before the show today, so we we're just having a nice, pleasant chat and a um, little bit of a natter and a little bit a of play. demonstrating and seeing if I can get away with it without having to redo my bobbin. Yeah. I might have a bobbin. Yeah. Do you know, I think we could just about do oh, it. Oh, I've only got a red one. We could just about do it. It's fine. Yeah? Yeah. Is red any good? Um, I don't think I need to do any more so, uh, sewing uh, just for a while. I think okay. I'll try to show how we put it all down. But the actual stitching it down, um, I stitched it down using a blanket stitch. Right. But uh, And all you do is going around all the pieces. But if you haven't got a blanket stitch on your machine, then a zigzag stitch. But try and keep the stitches small, so change the stitch length slightly. Or, um, because you're using the bonder web and it sticks it down really, really well, you could even just do a straight sti stitch yeah. all the way around. Even like a, if you did a, a black thread, that yes. would look quite quite cool. It would make it stand out. Or you could do free motion over yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you could even add on a little bit more um, for the hair. Morag says a squirrel would be lovely. Oh, yeah. Um, it's her grandmother's nickname because she's always nibbling away. Oh. Oh. Sweet. And Jackie says, hi Debbie and Delphine, what a lovely hi. morning with lots of lovely sewing. It's nice having two of you there and so nice to see proper demos demonstrated in real time. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you for your messages. Um, um, uh, so was it Gina? Gina wants a llama. A llama. I, li I like that idea. Brilliant. <laughs> Very creative. We'll get you one in the post. One postage all day. <laughs> Very creative. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hannah was saying, uh, Hannah producer upstairs was saying, uh, can you please make sure you're in when they deliver the llama because your neighbours won't appreciate it being left with them. So I'm going quite quick at the moment, uh, but again, with your, um, when you do come to cut out your pieces, take your time and make sure you're going over the lines. And as you can see, also with the waist, don't waste that as well. You could even put that underneath a few of the pieces to make oh, the hem. Yeah. Because they're still points, aren't they? So, nearly there. I'm nearly back with you. Sorry, is this a bit noisy? Because it's right by. Yep, yep. I'm hearing you fine. Nearly there now. There we go. We managed to do it without doing that last bit of sewing. Just a couple of mils out. So, if you, you everything that you do at the moment involves either. Um, embroidery, quilting, sewing mm -hmm. and artwork. Uh-huh. Is there a, a craft that you'd like to do that you don't do at the moment? There's a, there's a few. I really like to do... Um, I'd like to learn how to crochet, but I don't know if I've got the patience. Um, and I'd also like to do, um, like, mosaic. Yeah, I think it's quite... Because I quite like quilting. Yeah. yeah. I think, so I'd really like to do mosaic. and that would be good. My sister does... Um, 
uh, is it lead lighting, do they call it, with glass? And making ornaments oh, and things yeah. and lampshades all with different coloured glass. I'd like to do that. I'd like nice. to do wood turning. Yeah. I'd love to have a go at that. Oh, I won't be very good at that. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I do have a pottery O level, you know. Do you? Oh, yes. Many talents <laughs> of Debbie Shaw. Never done it since. I love pottery. It's just getting the time, isn't it? I yeah. think that's the, the, that's the trouble. Is that the right word? When you are quite creative, you just want to do everything. Yes. Um, yeah. And then you've got to buy a new house to fit it all in. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to do at the moment. We, 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 we'd like to move and uh, just to accommodate well, me. <laughs> so it's not that, you know, we've got a four-bedroom house. It's perfectly fine, but I just need, I, just, I want a nice big studio. Is that selfish to move house? Absolutely just, not. I think, it's, I think it's really important. There you go, Nick. Debbie's, Debbie's Nick, saying. Nick, she said. You've got to move house so yeah. you need a bigger place. She's, she's outgrown the house you're in at the moment. <laughs> He's in the shed working at the moment, which was my uh, sewing room, although I've never sewn in it because I'm scared of spiders, so I don't go out there. So what, what have I done here? I've just faced ahead, haven't I? Yep. So, yeah, so this will be the, the face of your cushion. What I've cut, not very well, If I've cut out a 20 inch piece of wadding. If you've got a fusible fleece, then that will work really well. And the white fabric I've cut to 19 inches so when you uh, come to quilt it will shrink a little bit so the finish size is approximately about 18 inches so i've ironed that that's still a bit wrinkly so now it's time to construct it to put it all together could you use wadding instead of fleece or oh yeah so yeah thing yeah so so wadding i've only done it because i think it, when you're doing the applique it just gives it a bit more luxurious feel yeah. doesn't it to, uh, and it's a nice finish so we are going to just put all our bits together. Okay. This is where the magic happens now. The only thing I've not done is the stem, but we will get the idea. Um, Kerry's messaged in. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Um, she's loving the show, she says. Thank you. Um, how about an elephant? Elephant. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like um, that idea. Laurie wants a giraffe. Giraffe, you know, that went through my head, though. And I thought about doing a giraffe, yeah. I'm on the same page as you. <laughs> and did we have a message from Linda? Um, oh, Linda's got a top tip for us. Um, she says, top tip, just like that. If you get a biro mark on fabric, spray it, spray it with hairspray and iron it. You may have to do it a couple of times, but it works. Oh, they're, they're a clever bunch, aren't they? I've got some hairspray. We've got a biro. Should we do it? Should yeah, we go, go on. Have we got a... So I'm only sticking down at this point anyway. I'm just sticking. Have we got a piece of plain fab? No, have we... I've do got some of this. I've got some plain... Uh, got some plain white. I've got a biro. I can't use that one. We've got... Do you want to use a bit of this? Getting told off for a... Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. So as you can okay. see on here, all I'm doing is just placing all my pieces. And I do say in the pattern, before you stick anything down, make sure you're happy with the placement. The only things, uh, I have actually written the instructions to um, which piece goes down first. But there's a couple, just with the lip, you tuck it underneath before you stick it down. And so, I'm going to... Are you actually doing that? I'm doing it. I've got... Pass that over to you, because so you've I'll got the a... iron. Moment of truth. She says we might have to do it a few times. Well, I well, keep spraying Keep it. spraying and ironing, spraying and ironing. Mm, it's fading a little bit. Is it? Yeah, just a little bit. Go on, give, give, it, give it another spray. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're oh, in the well ventilated room, honestly. Is there a certain type of pest spray? <laughs> <laughs> I think firm hold works best. Um, what do is you it think? Fading? It's fading. I think we should keep doing it. It's, so, got, it's gone very stiff. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lovely soft bit of fabric. It's not anymore. <laughs> oh dear. So do we, do we need to keep doing this and it fades or do we have to wash it? We're going to keep doing it till it's gone. We're now. going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I'm coming, just going to stick these down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit messy, aren't I? I'm getting better. Ah, oh, there we are. I love working here. It's, it's <laughs> had a bowel of laughs this morning. It's not working, is it? <laughs> so make sure when you put the stick down, use this as your reference. Remember, it's not to scale, though. Uh, right. I hope that's not... Is it made the iron black? Are we going to have to get the paracetamol out? <laughs> Anybody got any paracetamol? Yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. So, there's, there's the horns. They're down. <laughs> I hope I'm doing this Dawn time. would love to see a Wallace and Gromit looking sheep. Oh, like Sean the sheep. Oh, Sean it? the sheep. Yeah. That's a good um, idea. Like that. And then Diana would like a long haired guinea pig for a daughter. These, these, these aren't animals that people are requesting, by the way, if you just joined us. <laughs> We're not going to get a guinea pig in the post. All I love guinea pigs. We had, um, we, used to, we had two guinea pigs that I bought from the pet shop when the kids were little, and they were both boys until one of them got pregnant. Um, <laughs> How does that work? But baby guinea pigs are born like baby guinea pigs. They're all furry and everything. They're just like guinea pigs, but tiny. Not Aww. like, you know, mice and rabbits are born bald. They're, they're proper little tiny, like, miniature oh, guinea lovely. pigs. are amazing. So you've got all those cats. How many other pets do you have? Oh, at the moment, we've got three cats and a dog. Three cats and a dog. Yeah, that's all. That's all for now. Have they got uh, funky names? The dog's called Bobbin. Bobbin, yes, I've seen Bobbin. <laughs> that's very fitting. And then we have a, a Sid and an Ollie, both female, kids named them. These are really old cats, they're about 20, so the kids had them when they were little. And then we have a Tom who adopted us about three years ago. She, he just Aww. turned up on the doorstep and, and stayed with us. Um, I took him to the vets just to see if he was chipped, and he was. So we got in touch with the owners who'd just moved house. And they'd come down from Scotland to the village that we live in. Uh -huh. And uh, they said that he disappeared as soon as they, they arrived. And they thought that he'd been run over. They just assumed Aww. that he was no longer with us. So you adopted him. Um, so they came round to take the cat back. And when they got there, they said, actually, he's so happy here. Can you keep him? Aww, so he stayed. Lovely. And he'll be 17. So another, another old Aww. boy. They get very noisy when they're old. Cats. Do they? You yeah. said they were snoring earlier. So, well, that was the dog. Oh. Um, <laughs> No, as they go deaf, they meow very loudly. So Aww. they're very noisy cats at the moment. You've got a tip of getting these off, haven't you, Debbie? Scratch the middle of it. I saw you do it the other day. You just scratch it with the yeah, with the scissors. Yeah, it's not going to go through it. Yeah, no, it won't go through. Mm -hmm. Who would like a T-Rex? Oh, Dawn, Dawn would like a T-Rex. Like that, brilliant. I think the dinosaur, not the Mark Bolan band. You're giving me lots of ideas. Oh, look at that, you see? <laughs> you can tell she's done this before. Debbie, not me. <laughs> uh, Carol's messaged in as well. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, the f oh, this is, it's the first time she's been able to watch on a TV, so she's obviously retuned on Freeview. Welcome back again. We're having a bit of nonsense this morning. Um, <laughs> Her husband has been working tireless, tirelessly this week to get Sewing Street back on the TV so we can get rid of her. <gasps> Do you know, okay. if that's the case, I would like to be got rid of. Um, her friend Anne's watching as well. Hi, Anne. Anne is enjoying the show. And cats, cats and guinea pigs for Anne. Cats and guinea pigs. You've got a bit of work to do when you get home, haven't you? I like the guinea pigs. That's the second time I, guinea yeah. pigs. I like the guinea pigs. There we are. Oh, I've, that's a good tip, that one. So, so would you put all of the pieces down and then embroider, or embroider as you go? Uh, all the pieces down first, and then right. embroider. Otherwise, you'd be sort of stitching things down and just wasting your time a little bit. So, And it could be a bit bumpy underneath. But like I did say, the pattern, make sure you're happy with the placement of your pieces before, before you commit to... Um, Sewing okay. before sticking them down. Yeah. yeah. So I'm nearly done. I've lost an ear. There we are. So as you can see, it comes together quite quickly. Yeah. So it, it, it won't take you long to do this project. Let me just have a look at mine for reference. There we are. I should have put that underneath. I did actually write that in the pattern actually that you do. 
put the ear underneath the hair because I remember doing it thinking that does need to go underneath it. And this one here. So the only thing I've not cut out today is the stem to of the little flower. You can choose to leave it out if you want to. No, I like the flower. Yeah. It's uh and to do the to do the old uh, the stem, it's just the two strips but sew together at the end to make a longer piece, like a ruler. Okay. There we go. Bit and when you um quilted, did you did just did that freehand, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I didn't do any fancy patterns. I just um, started from one corner and uh, and then I finished in the other. And if if you're not confident in doing it free motion, then just, just doing sewing that the, the yeah. lines would look a bit like, I don't know if you can see it, but just up, up the top of that quilt that I did this morning. But um, that works. It just, just makes it a bit more luxurious, doesn't it, when you, when you, when yes. you quilt them. Yeah. And this piece is just coming off. So before you do iron that one, tuck the lip underneath, as shown, it is shown in the pattern. There we go. I've lost my nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> the nostrils have disappeared. Oh dear. How does it smell? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Where have they gone? I've got the flower. I can't help you, I've got to be two metres away from you. Oh. I can't help you find your nostrils. You can't find my Delphine. nostrils, I've lost my nostrils. Why? I, every time, every time I, I, I do anything, I always, oh, I found them, I found them. <laughs> do you know, I think we should, uh, for Christmas, put together lots of little clips of just <laughs> sentences like that. I think they've all happened in this show, that's, two, that's this morning. So, so if we just take out, I've lost my nostrils. Lost oh, my... that's gone stiff. <laughs> I don't think we could have, we couldn't make a rep out of it, could we? Oh, not to mention the squeaky chair and the chair that collapses. Right, I've nearly In fact, we could, that's just today's show, really, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> in a nutshell. Oh, Carol with an E. Carol with an E's messaged in. And she says, uh, morning, ladies. Morning, Carol with morning. an E. Morning. Loving the shows this morning. It's lovely to see guests on the show again. It is, isn't it, Carol? It's nice. Um, enjoying the sewing and the chats. <laughs> and there we are. Whew. Step away from the cow. There we are. <laughs> that is gorgeous. So, oh, too, that's my favourite one out of the two. So, and mine. Yeah. He, he, looks, he looks kind, doesn't he? He does. Um, so I would have done the stem, um, but I, I don't know why I didn't. Well, we haven't got time uh, to do yeah. the stem because we're almost out of time. Because, of course, you have so, prepped the stem and it's there and ready to the go and everything. There. But, so um, there it is. You quilt it as you like and an envelope back. Nice, no simple instructions. And there you are. Look how effective that is. That's gorgeous. Thank and you. enjoy. Um, well, we are just about out of time for this show. When are you back again? I am back next Monday. Oh, now next Mondays are all the special it days is. because it's um, Sewing Street Surgery. So if you've got any uh, questions, then do email them in. We'll do a bit of a Q&A. Um, you know, we're live for five hours next Sunday. That's a long time for you it to is, see. Yeah. I, it is. No coffee yeah. for me in the morning. No. There. And it's not always five hours. It's only, it's only on birthdays we have, we have five hours. Um, but we will have some... We will have some special offers and things going on then too. Mm. Um, I'll see you next week then. Yeah, thank you for having me. Enjoyed no, it's, that. it's, oh, been, it's been fun. Really good fun and very inspirational. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so we'll see Delphine again next week. Let me just give you a reminder if you're brand new to us here on Sewing Street, how you can place your orders. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. 
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. I'm just going to give you some details of the design role that I mentioned earlier on that uh, we, we don't have any of the kits. They have completely sold out before we even started the show. So well done for getting hold of yours. But if you did want to go for the fabrics, yours will arrive a lot neater than this has been shoved into a bag. Um, but this is the only way that you can get hold of that fabric if you needed it. And we don't have very many of these left. So you'll have 40 of the strips of fabric. This is all tulip pink all rolled up very neatly, which I may do, because I don't like creased up fabric. Um, but if you love the fabric, then this is the only way that you're going to be able to get hold of it now. So it's £34.99, 40 pieces each measuring two and a half inches wide. So these will be, you could, no, not the bigger ones. You'd need some extra fabric to make noses with, wouldn't you? But certainly for the hair or the mane on the unicorns and, um, and the hair on the cow, the Highland cow, you could do that with. Um, so £34.99 is your price there. Right, we have we have another show coming. I want to tidy those in a minute. Whoop, 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 whoop. We have Chula Pilt. Chula Pink. Variegated threads for you. Chula's um, actually designed these um, in conjunction with Aurofil. So you know you've got quality, 100% um, cotton and 50 weight. So these are going to be the, the, the right weight for most of your sewing projects. So there she is. And this is what she's put together for you. This is nice for um, embroidery or free motion embroidery as well if you want to create a little bit of texture um, because the colours just seem to change thread as you go. 200 metres on each one of those spools and those are £33.99 for those. If you love your Aurofil, we've got your basic colours here as well. So there's a, a black, a white, a grey and the neutral for £35.99. And there's, again, 50 weights, so the, the, most, the most popular size you're going to of thread that you're going to use, whether you're quilting or whether you're dressmaking, actually. So I can't bear these being all screwed up. So it's going to take me a couple of minutes to sort those out. So meanwhile, <laughs> I'll do this. We'll go to a quick break and we'll see you again for another live hour in a minute. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. 
Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton upon Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. And not far from there, I also have a little sewing studio, so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is, in fact, quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some, something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere and sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, I should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a, a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a, a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush, it's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so that you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be and I would have to say in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, welcome back to Sewing a Street. We're still live. I know it's the last hour. This is the first day that we've gone live for four hours. So nice to have you company this morning. Um, I want to give you a reminder before we get started on this hour of our early bird special from eight o'clock this morning while we have stock left. And these are Creative Grids um, Scrap Crazy templates. 
I likened it to organised chaos earlier on because there's lots of ways that you can use scraps to make scrappy quilts, but the way these have been designed means that your scrappy quilt is going to be uniform, which gives it a more polished look. So that's the kind of look that you're going to have. You can use the, um, uh, the templates for different things as well. So for instance, six of those triangles joined together will make up a hexagon. Um, but there's different ideas on the packaging. What you'll also see on the packaging from Creative Grids is um, a QR code. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet, you'll need a QR scanner. Um, download one of those, make sure it's for free, hover your camera or hover the scanner app over the top of the barcode and it'll go straight to a YouTube channel and you'll see a video demonstration for the ruler. That's on all of the, they're actually on the ruler as well. Um, Creative Grids also have a Pinterest page, so if you need inspiration and ideas as to how you're going to use your templates, every single one of these is using the same set of templates. And look at the different kind of designs that you can make with these. So it's an incredibly versatile set of templates as well. So even more ideas down there too. Oh, remember we have a, pen, a, pen, a Pinterest page. Um, ours is Sewing Street TV. We have also have an Instagram account, again, Sewing Street TV. So if you, if you are a little bit stuck, maybe you've lost your mojo um, and you need a little bit of inspiration, then do visit those and it would be jolly nice if you followed us as well. Um, Early bird, we bring, we call it an early bird because at eight o'clock every morning we bring you a special offer at a reduced price for the duration of the day or for as long as we have the stock. So we take a couple of pounds off things here and there, we've taken two pounds off these and uh, basically that means that if you order something, you've got yourself a bargain, then um, you'll have your three ninety five postage to pay on top of your £19.99 but then throughout the whole of the rest of the day, because you've made one purchase, we don't charge you any postage for any further purchases that you make so you could come back anytime even after we're live all the way through to midnight tonight and order a sewing machine or an overlocker or a pair of scissors or some bond web it doesn't matter the price or the weight of the item that you're buying you won't be charged any extra postage whatsoever so that's why we do it give you a bargain first thing in the morning thanks for being with us and reduce the price of something so here you have four templates which again, when you can see on, on this one particularly how they actually work. So there we go. Um, so there's the triangle. There's even the mark or the cutting line. Um, if you wanted to go for that option, where to cut it. Uh, that's how that one fits in there and how that one fits there. And then the little one, whoops, fits in there. But again, that's only one design that's only one patch don't have to put the little triangle in there if you don't want to as on these but again you can see and that one look it's kind of nice because you're using small pieces of fabric you're using up maybe leftover fabrics or maybe you've been buying one of these scrappy bags of fabric that seem to be so popular at the moment and you don't know what to do with them you can create something very big using very small scraps but i like the way that all of your little blocks are going to be uniform it's not just like disorganized madness with lots of bits which is great makes a fantastic quilt but here again when i show you this piece um, you can see it gives you a more organized kind of look it's a little bit more uniform Actually, if you have um, all different blues or all different reds or black and whites would be really nice, wouldn't it? So using tonal kind of fabrics. Or maybe there's one shape that you can pick out. So you can see all the different random shapes here in yellow, but it's the yellow that kind of really stands out, isn't it? So you could maybe make one shape, maybe all of the triangles are going to be in a, in a bold colour. So there's, uh, again, different ways you can use this. A third of the stock has sold out. That's good for you, we've still got two thirds of the stock left. Right, so pop that up to one side. We have some brand new colours in our extra wide bagric. bagric. This is what happens when we're live for four hours. My, my, my tongue stops working after three hours and I can't talk properly. Extra wide backing fabric. So this is a brand new colour. And you know, we, we call this backing fabric because it's the right kind of size for the backing of a quilt with having, without having to join pieces together. Um, however, it's 100% cotton. It's a lovely quality. We don't skimp on the quality just because it's a backing fabric. So if you're lining curtains or making curtains or you're making bed sheets, um, sorry, duvet covers and you want something, you know, a little bit different, um, then 
you can just use the whole sheet. So this is only half a metre wide. Yours will be as long as you want it to be because this is by the half metre. But see, that's not going to make a very big quilt, is it? Because it's a half metre strip. But if you need a four metre strip, then simply order um, for eight. So then, and they're all kind of joined up together. I just want to show you how wide this actually is. But it's a great fabric for linings, for cushion backs. And this is the length. All of that for £8.99. That's a lot, isn't it? 200, that's almost three metres in width. I told you we were two metres apart. Our studio looks tiny, but it's actually a little bit bigger than you would imagine. So again, this is the black one. You can see the linear design on there. And again, it's, it's a nice weight. And maybe I can show you that later on, so I'm going to leave that there. Another new colour we have for you is the grey. This is lovely. Very, I like grey. Grey is kind of a, an upmarket kind of colour. And again, it's not just for backing. It's just an awful lot of fabric for £8.99. Um, so you could be making storage tubs or lining them or lining baskets. Um, lots of matching homers. Do you know, even um, things in the nursery, maybe, if you've got uh, neutral tones in the nursery, this could be bed linen. Um, it could be toy baskets and laundry bags. There's so much fabric here for £8.99. But again, if you are quilting, if you are making a quilt and you need a backing for it, it just means that you don't have to join it together. That is, unless you're making a quilt that's more than two, uh, 280 centimetres wide. That would be a rather big quilt, wouldn't it? So again, that's the grey at £8.99. One more new colour, which is the green one. So you can make a cushion cover out of the, uh, the panels I'm going to show you in a second. That as a backing would look really nice, wouldn't it? So for sashing, for borders, maybe making an, an awful lot of, um, of bias binding. Bias binding, depending on how you cut it, can be quite wasteful because you're cutting at a 45 degree angle. You'd be able to get loads of it out of this one strip without even having to order more. So again, 208 centimetres. That's just shy of three metres in width. And again, you're ordering by the half a metre, so they will come joined up if you go for more than one. We also have the red. Maybe you want a traditional Christmas look. Go for the reds and the greens together. Christmas stockings, table runners, um, gift bags would be such a good idea. I'm trying to avoid paper at the moment for packaging. Um, and when you're using fabric, of course, it's recyclable because whoever you give it to will then be able to repurpose the bag for Christmas next year. So that would make a nice Christmas type of bag. But of course, it's not Christmassy fabric, so it could be gift bags for all year round. Maybe you're making them to sell and you just want, you know, if you're making a bag, but you just want a really affordable lining to balance the price out a little bit, um, then this is a good way to go. But it's a good weight. Don't think when you get it home, I'm, I'm going to be so disappointed because at £8.99, it's going to feel like a dishcloth. It doesn't. It's a, it's a nice quality of fabric, this one. And again, it's 100% cotton. This is the turquoise. So this time you've got the blue checkered lines on here. Same width, 280 wide. We're calling this one aqua, but it's a, it's a lovely bright colour. And again, £8.99. You can't go wrong. There's so much for £8.99. What are you going to use yours for? Um, black's the most, most, I told you I can't fall. Black is the most popular at the moment. That goes nice with that grey. We only have, I'll just show you that, um, 25 metres of this left now, which may not seem very much, but if 50 of you place your, well, you're not going to go for half a metre, are you? Not as backing fabric, I wouldn't go for half a metre. It goes really nicely with that. Mind you, so does that. I'm going to make a cushion cover in a bit. I might use that. Um, yeah, so if you're ordering, um, say, two and a half metres, you're going to order five of those, which means that there's only going to be um, five of you that can order that amount before we run out of stock. My math's right there. That doesn't seem right. So 25 metres may seem a lot, but when you're multi-ordering, uh, it doesn't actually go that far. So place your order as quickly as you can. 
we have a mix of fabrics for you. Most of these are new. It's nice to have something new, isn't it? So you may have seen some of these before. I've got my eye on the grey. Um, OK, so if you wanted to order the red, you're going to order HZLJ86. And uh, we're calling this one Claret. This is one of the new colours for you today. I like the cloudy kind of finish to them. I think it adds a little bit more interest than just a plain colour. You know, even if you're using this with a pattern fabric, if you're quilting or the like, it's, um, it makes it a bit more interesting. It's only £3.99 and that is for half a metre. So we, we try and keep these on the website for as long as we can, but we do tend to sell a lot of core fabrics like this. That with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. This is the charcoal, so order ZULJ95. Another brand new colour for you today. I just think greys look really classy. Um, pale greys and dark greys together look really nice. Lots of dark grey would look really dull, but I think when we put our grey panels next to it, then the colours on there are really going to stand out. 3 for half a metre. And again, as they're by half a metre, that means that um, if you buy two or three or four, they will come to you in one big piece. We've got a lovely pink, so this one is WGL J52 and it's not a new one but this is one of those colours that always sells out. Again at 3 99 Then nice quality cotton as well with these. Would we bring you anything less? Purtle is VOLJ24. Magenta, we're calling this one. Brand new colour for you today. That's rich and regal and luxurious. Beautiful. For £3.99. Then we have a deep dark navy. Another brand new colour for you today, this is QILJ08, if you wanted to order this one. Really inky blue, isn't it? It's like a blue-black. There we go. It softens the look as well, doesn't it? Rather than a... Solid's very nice, but they're a little bit more interesting when you've got the, the shading on these. This is more of a cobalt or a royal blue, which is DCLJ76. I'm thinking swimming pools again. Mm. Another brand new colour for you today, royal blue, we're calling this one. And then, oh, you love the teal one. The grey by the, the, oh, the backing, the wide one, or the grey one. A third of the stock sold out of, of this one. Want to go for that one, need to be quick, because that's going to go rather quickly, my reckons, my thinks. Um, look at this colour. Oh, I love this. This is the jade. This has been selling on the website, brand new for you, but before we've even shown it. Isn't that just such a gorgeous colour? So that'll go really well with greys. And, and ev everything just goes with these panels. I don't, oh, no, that one. That one. <gasps> 3 99 again for half a metre. <laughs> Then we've got the orange, but it's not a fluorescent type of orange. A little bit more subtle. OELJ53 is your item number for this one. Tangerine. It is a quilting weight of cotton, but you could quite easily use this for, um, for dressmaking. You think, Do you know, I'd, I'd love to make some children's clothes out of really bright, fun colours or a blouse. And a nice little bucket hat. Look at the sunshine yellow. That's an uplifting colour, isn't it? That is so bright. That's what you'd like to see streaming through your windows in the morning, isn't it? It was raining this morning. I'm never going to get my studio finished if it keeps raining. Right. There we go. There we go. It's a shed, really. 
Um, and then finally is the cream. This one's a little bit more subtle, but it is the blender, so it does have the, uh, the shades. This is another new one for you today. Can you see that? I'll tip it down a little bit. You can see the shading on there. There we go. And again, that's three ninety nine. So that's all of the, the blenders that we have for you. If you've missed that or you just joined us, have a look on the website if you can on sewingstreet.com and you'll see all of the different colours of fabrics and the rainbow bundles and, and everything else that we have available for you there. Um, if you want to go for the extra wide backing, uh, please check out of your baskets if you're ordering that way because we're going to be selling out of some quite shortly. We've got the black, the grey, we have aqua um, and the claret and the green. So we've got some new colours for you there as well. And those backing fabrics are the ones that are almost three metres in length. So that's the whole of the length of our studio. Right, um, the Alison glass panels that we started the show with are these. It's the first time you've seen these independent of a bundle. And look what you're getting. So there are eight um, medallions all together, which you can cut up individually. You could use those. I was thinking maybe um, four of those in a row would make a nice table runner. So then you've got two. And then, of course, you've got uh, the other fabrics that you can use as borders to make those even bigger. But look at the colours that you have in here. And, and literally, they will go with anything so many colors so they're going to go with red they will go with a gray they'll go with a pink they'll go with purples they'll go with the dark blues they'll go with the royal blues they'll go with the teals and the oranges and the yellows or you could just keep it muted and go for a cream so there's so many colours in there, they will go with absolutely anything. So individually as cushion covers, I'm going to do that in the show um, with the grey one, I think. I do like that grey one. So let's pop that away. You could go for both, actually, because they, they go nicely together, don't they? So instead of having, if making cushion covers, for instance, instead of having the same. Or you could do um, table runners with one and then placemats. You can make eight placemats out of this. Round ones or square ones. I love the grey in the background. I think it's unexpected. See a dark grey like that. But you can really see the pattern of the print in the background as well. This really stands out, doesn't it? So pretty. Um, and although you've got a combination of lots of colours, when you look closely, we've got moths and, um, and butterflies and flowers and leaves. And see, if not, that's a moth, that's really pretty. Moths are gorgeous. Moths or butterflies? Moths are, I, go, I go for moths. I think moths get a raw deal because butterflies are normally so pretty. So I'm, I'm all about the moths. A moth on a cushion cover for Delphine would be nice, wouldn't it? Right, should we do some sewing? Do I have a time frame on this one? She's, Hannah's going to let me know, thanks. That's like, like yesterday, I started making something or other, I can't even remember. Oh, it was a pocket hanger, wasn't it? And then halfway through, 10 minutes. OK, OK. Uh, chopping those off there, I only need one. I'm not going to use one on the back. So I'll just cut that out roughly for now and then we'll square it off. So we'll take off the selvage. And then let's, let's just make sure that we have a square. So we've got plenty of time, haven't we? We're, we're live for four hours a day. We can do what we like. So that's 11 that way. So I'll need it to be 11 that way. So I need to trim off a little bit each side. So does that look about right? Perfect, that's an 11 inch square. I want to make it a little bit bigger though. So I turn, mmm, oh, now then I'm thinking, hold the line. 
I don't know if you, I think most of you understand the way that it works in the world of live television, uh, whether it's news at 10 or a shopping channel, we have voices in our ears. Um, so I can hear a producer and I can hear a director. And all I could hear going through those calls is, ooh, oh, go for the jade, go for the jade. Right, off you come, Selvage, we don't want you. And we're just going to have a small border it would be it'd be nice to do some piping around that bit, I think, wouldn't it? But I, that's, that'll take too long. Um, so I think my border is just going to be a couple of inches. I'm just going to cut four strips two inches wide. One, two, three. Actually, we, we had a quick rehearsal in the break and Cat producer said, you can say whatever you like as long as you use red thread. It's not, it doesn't really go with this, does it? Because that's the only colour bobbin fill we had. We'll be fine. I'm going to use red thread um, so that it gives you a nice contrast. And you can see it on, on screen, which is helpful. So <laughs> sometimes when we're making samples like this, we, we make them smaller because it's easier to see them on TV. It has nothing to do with the fact that we don't have enough fabric to make bigger projects. Everything's smaller on the telly. Actually, everything's bigger on the telly. They reckon it puts two stone on you. Is it two stone or is it two pounds? Right, so I am. Um... So I always think a, a, an, an easy way to make yourself look smaller is to just wear a really, really big handbag. So the bigger the handbag, the smaller you look. Or a big hat, just wear something really big. The director says, or you could go for the 20 by 20 creative grids ruler and say that it's a 6 by 6. You'd look tiny then, wouldn't you? Oh, I love it here. <laughs> if my mum was around still, um, she, she used to say to me, because I've never had a, a, a proper job, really, um, but even when I first started working in TV, which was some 40 years ago now, I'd go, when are you going to get a proper job out, Deborah? You're going to get a proper job. She would be saying that to me now. That's not a job. It's not a proper job. But even when I was... Um, I, I did have a sensible job when I left school. I worked in a bank. After, after being a... Um, a draftswoman, a trainee draftswoman for a while, I ended up in a bank. That was a proper job. She had, I had pension and everything. She was ever so proud of me. She was devastated when I left the bank into this frivolous TV world. Oh, our Deborah, it's not a secure job. You better learn how to type. So uh, off I went to secretarial college to learn touch typing. It didn't last very long. <laughs> So I'm just sewing four pieces around here just to make it a little bit bigger and then I'm going to sew another four pieces of the grey to make it rather a lot bigger. That's not... Oh, so I nearly fell over the light box cable then. Oh, it is one of those days today. It's a bit, a bit worrying because it's getting to be like that every day. Right, let's trim that down so it's square. So you can't tell I'm using red thread. Um, ivory is the most popular of these colours at the moment. FYI. Right, one fast small piece down here. There we go. Um, I'm 
the brand new jade that I'm using, we've only got 12 metres of that one left now. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? It goes so well with these panels. So you could, in effect, if, you, if you're going for extra fabric with the panels, you could make eight of these cushion covers. Shall we put a zip in it? I think I've got one. We'll do an envelope back. Because I don't have a zip big enough, I don't think. So that was a two inch border. And then I'm going to put some grey around the edge of that as well. So that's that. Let's do the grey. You could just carry on and make something huge out of this, couldn't you? So let's have a look at this one. There you go. Stick that at that end. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to go for four inches. I'm going to go for a big one. Um, edge cutter, ruler. So salvage off first. Let's try it. Yeah. And then four inch strips. So we'll need four of those. One. Room for one more. Oh. And I'm going to have to iron that, I'm afraid. Can't sew with creased up fabric. I did cut four, didn't I? There, and I'll just sew those around the edge in the same manner. And then I think we'll have a decent sized uh, cushion cover. So we'll do it in the same way. So side pieces first. I'm going to save all my scraps as well. Maybe do a little bit of EPP. And again, you can just keep going with this. You could actually make um, a decent sized wall hanging or a really big cushion cover. Depends on the size of your cushion pad, I suppose. And then on the opposite side, so that goes right sides together here. Just trim that one back to make it square. And I'll do that. That's it. Now don't forget next Monday we've got um, surgery. So if you do have any problems, if you've got any questions, um, then do pop them onto the Sewing Street Facebook page or you can message or you could email actually, they'll all get, they'll all get picked up. Um, so if you want anything particular demonstrating or you're having any problems with anything, um, sewing related, then um, come and let me know and we shall endeavour to answer your questions. Only your sewing problems though, if you don't, if you don't mind. Right, and then we'll trim this one back and put the top and the bottom on and then we can make up the back of the cushion. Um, so much time. Oh, we've got loads of time, haven't we? Might put a bit of fleece on the back of it as well then. Because this would be nice quilted, wouldn't it? Um, or like Delphine did with the, um, the quilt behind and on the cushion cover actually. There's more of the quilting going on in between the applique. Um, so I could not quilt over the, um, the panel in the middle and just do all the rest of it would be rather nice. Ooh. Oh, that was lucky. Oh no, is that one of the strips? Just the right length. That, that, was, that wasn't lucky, that was well planned. Nothing to do with luck, it's all about the planning. 
Well, it's a bit short, but it'll be fine. Just trim it down again. So with the panel and then a two inch strip and then a four inch strip, that's probably going to be the biggest you can make this using this technique without having to draw pieces of fabric together, which you don't really want to do. However, if you want to get extra wide backing, you could go massive with it. And that's there. But these colours work well together. Oh, that's not good. That's better. And then one last strip on this side and that's that done. Oh, I'm really pleased with this. Right. And I'm just using the edge of the foot as, um, as a seam allowance, so it's not a quarter of an inch or a half an inch or anything like that. Let's just do that, okay. And as I have got red thread in here, I'm just going to do a little bit of top stitching, so I'm not quilting the whole thing but I think it would be quite nice to do a little bit of decorative stitching on there because we've got time, haven't we? Um, I think we have. Hi, Elaine. Elaine says, loving the show. Great demos, thank you very much. Um, could the Alison glass panels be used to make table runners? Yes. Right. So I'm just listening to this coming through. Um, she wants to know if there's enough additional fabric on the edge of the panels um, to add a binding. Yes. Let me show you on the panel itself. So you have, um, I mean, taking into account we've got the selvage there, you've probably got about half an inch. So yes, plenty enough so that you can add um, borders and things like that. Depending on the shape, and you've got more space in between here, there's about an inch in between the two there. Um, but if you're just going to cut them out individually, like what I did, you do have enough for maybe a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, so you're not eating into the, the pattern itself. Um, so yes, you can add borders to it and you can make it as big as you like from there. Um, and yes, for a table runner, so I was thinking initially maybe just four of those in a row as the table runner, but if you're doing it this kind of method, you could actually join together maybe one, two, three, and that would make a sizable table runner, and it's wide as well. And you've only used three of your panels because you're using extra fabric to make that go that little bit further. So yes, any more questions? Do bring them on. If you just joined us, we're live. Well, not if you've just joined us on YouTube because we won't be live then. So that's going to get a little bit confusing. But if you are with us at 25 to 12 on a Monday morning, then we are certainly live. Right, so a little bit of H640 on the back of this, which is out of stock, but we're, we're bound to get more in. Um, you can use some wadding and maybe a little bit of 505 spray to hold it together while you're quilting it. Right, plenty of steam with your H640. It will take it, shouldn't wrinkle up. I've never found it to really. Like that. And then we'll trim off the excess. Straighten that up a little bit. And I'm just, I'm only going to sew really quickly because I would like to, wouldn't it be nice to complete two things in a day? <laughs> Um, actually, teal would have been nice as a... No, nope, but we're going to stick with the red because I haven't got teal with me. And I'm just going to stitch around the grey, actually, so that's really going to stand out. Um, half a foot's width away from... Start there, from the edge. Long stitch. So if you've got a, a walking foot on your machine, the more layers that you put together like this, the easier you're going to find it to sew. Crumb out. So stop right there, needle down, turn around. Oh, that looks nice. So 
you could, could just keep going round and round a bit of echo quilting with it. Um, you could stitch in the ditch, but you probably find, particularly if you're new to quilting, it's actually easier to stitch slightly away from the ditch, as I'm doing here, than trying to follow that exact straight line. Unless you've got a stitch in the ditch foot, of course, that would make things easier. It's quite nice in the reds as well. Ooh, wobbly. Um, just to give you a quick reminder of the extra wide backing, um, the grey that I showed you earlier, two thirds of the stock sold out of that one. Brand new colours for you. You've seen extra wide backing fabric here before if you've been a regular, but we do have some new colours for you. Um, it's by the half metre at 8.99 for half a metre. So order as many of those as you wish and they will come all joined up. And it's 280 centimetres wide, so that's almost three metres in width. So perfect for quilting. Curtain linings maybe, or if you just want a really bargain fabric for linings and cushion backs and things that you don't see too much of. How's that? It's nice, isn't it? So let's do a backing um, and use the rest of this one up. If I was making to sell, I'd put a lining on the back of that one and I would be a little bit more generous with the backing here. So in other words, I'd need more fabric than this and I'd fold that piece in half like that and then do the same with another piece and overlap it in the opposite direction. So therefore, I've got two thicknesses of fabric here. Um, so do that, put the other piece on, then I would put a piece of backing fabric, the whole size of this on and sew around. And then when you turn it inside out, you don't see any seams. However, I'm making the most of the fabric that I have here and I haven't got enough to do that. Or if you're making one for yourself, then maybe you're not too fussed about having linings inside. Let's take that salvage off again. So, and then I need to iron that. Lots of time to do this, got 25 minutes left. I, I, I could do two. Let's take those creases away and on this one. Any of the mats or anything that we're using as well are probably available on the website. So I don't think we sell irons, but the mats certainly there. That's that. I'm going to hem over one long edge. So just fold that over twice to make it neat. So I'll have the stitch length down a bit. Over once, over twice. You may find it easier to iron that before you sew it. And there we go. go on. Over once, over twice. You can measure and pin if you like. I just find it easier actually to just fold it as I go. One of these edges you're going to see, the other one will be underneath. So if you do have a wobbly stitch, then put that underneath. Ribbon ties on the back would have been nice, wouldn't they? Or oh, could have done buttonholes. That'd be nice, button through back. But this is just going to be an envelope, because it's quicker. So there's one side. And the same on this one. So fold over once, fold over twice. So you have a nice, neat edge. So I'll just pull, just pull the power lead out. Or the foot pedal lead out. It does have a start stop button on the front, so it doesn't really matter about the foot pedal. Just keep folding. And almost there. So what are you going to do with your panels? Or when we brought these to you previously, when they were in a bundle, what did you make with them? So I think there's going to be some quilters out there. I think there's going to be some homewares. 
uh, make a nice little bag as well. Right, so there's no kind of right and wrong side to this one, but normally with an envelope like I like the fold or the join to be across, not, not that way. So let's say it's there. So one of these is going to go here. It's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. And then the other one will overlap like so. And we'll have a few pins in there, particularly on the overlap. So hold that square. Pins and stuff, website. Uh, I like flower head pins as well. These are, I normally use these for anything, dressmaking, bag making, because I can see them. And they're nice and long, particularly with thick fabrics like this, so you can actually get them in there. Right, and we're going to sew all the way around the edge. When I get to the bit where it's overlapping, I can feel the lump there. I'm just going to go backwards and forwards, and that'll strengthen it because that's where the cushion's going to go in. So that's where any strain on the seam is going to be. And literally, I'm just going to sew all the way around. So stop with the needle down there. Around we go. So you're starting Christmas presents early. You know, it's nearly July and I haven't even started shopping yet. No, I said, I said earlier though, we don't actually um, buy very many presents at the moment. I think it's, it's quite, we never know what to get each other, so we just don't bother. Um, it got to the stage where we were saying, what do you want for Christmas? And then go and buy it. So it's, there's no surprises anymore. So what we tend to do is just get together so the kids, the grandchildren have them. Um, I'll have another one by Christmas. I'm going to have a grandson. It's a boy. I'm collecting them. Um, so we buy for the kids and then for the adults, we just get together and have a nice meal. Not necessarily at Christmas. I think last year we had Christmas in February. It's the only time we could get together. So yes, hopefully we'll all be able to get together by Christmas. But isn't it great that we can communicate via the Skypes and the Zooms and the team viewers and things like that? Okay, we're finished. Let's take out my pins. I'm going to chop off the corners because it is quite bulky. And I'd like my points to be pointy, thank you very much. So just snip straight across. Uh, and this one, oh, that wasn't quite straight. The charcoal panel, the, um, the floral panel, we've only got six left of those now. Right, so let's turn this the right side out. I'll measure it as well. So I was just looking to see if we've got any cushion pads, but I don't think we have. Um, I'll measure it so that if you are doing the same dimensions, you know what size of cushion pad you need to pop inside there. That's that finished. Envelope back means it just slips inside there. And the finished size is... 19 inches square. Oh, that's a bit of an odd size. Now you can get 18 inch square cushion pads. Um, I don't think you can get 19. I would go for a 20 and then you'll have a really nice plump cushion. Um, I'm not a fan of feathers. Um, so if you go for hollow fiber and you find that your cushion's too plump, then you can always make a little hole in the back of it and take some of the hollow fiber out and then sew it back up again. So you can actually make it fit. Um, Rachel's emailed in. Hi, Rachel. And she says, morning, morning. She's loving it. Thank you very much. It's nice, isn't it? Um, her lounge cushions need replacing. Oh, there you go. And she loves the fabric. I think it works really well, doesn't it? So dark grey, if you were I've got plain dark grey cushions. They're okay. But I think the panel in the middle just really brings it to life, doesn't it? Um, and again, from that panel, you can actually make eight of those. But we've only got three left now. So that's the grey. We do still have your ivy. Now, if I was going to go for 
an ivy. I'm not going to chop into this because I think I've, I've indulged enough. So let's pretend I've chopped that there. Now then, so that, that's quite dark. Let's go something. We could do a red. Do you know, I don't, I don't think, I think I'm, I'm drawn to the teal. Jade, sorry. Jade, it, Jade. See, I'd go for that. Yeah, um, but then, because remember I've done, I've done two on this one, so I could, on top of that, add a purple. Like that? Or do you think we could just do that? That's nice, isn't it? Now, that, that's not a solid colour. It does have texture. And actually, this works really well because this is a white in the background, but it's actually got a print on it. And the print is exactly the same colour as the cream. So it really matches. So it's very subtle, but you can see it looks white, but then when you look closely, this colour cream is exactly the same colour as that cream. So it matches really well. Oh yes, that, that's, that's my choice. So what you know, I'm doing your shopping for you. So you will need to order the panel in the cream, which is just £8.99, £9.99. And then the jade mixer, which is three ninety nine, and then you've got the cream mixer, which is again three pounds ninety nine. So that's ten, fourteen, eighteen pounds. We'll be able to make you a cushion cover to fit a twenty inch cushion pad. So that that will be uh, that is plenty with some jade left over um, to make exactly what I've just made. I think those colours go so well together. To be honest, you could throw any colour against it, and they'd they'd all work really well. Even the pink, not the yellow. I wouldn't the yellow. You could the orange. What about the blue? Go for the blue. Go for one of each. <laughs> so it, it works, doesn't it? Um, and then I'd go for extra. That, that would be really nice, actually. Then just have the ivory all the way around to kind of tie it in together. I like that look. Can't wait to see your pictures when you're making yours. Right, fold that, fold that. Um, if you just joined us, we've got the extra wide backing fabric with new colour options for you too. So I'll show you the size of the backing fabric. Which is this, a brand new colour for you, which is the black. It is 2.8 metres in width. This is the second most popular this morning. So our, our studio, our studio is three metres wide and this is 20 centimetres short of the length of the whole studio. That would be a, a rather large quilt, wouldn't it? But as a quilt back of course you're going to need to order more than one. This is half a metre, so you'll need to order more. And of course they're going to come joined up together. Um, but what about curtain lining? or curtains for that matter. This isn't a, a cheap, flimsy, see-through fabric. It's a really nice quality fabric. And it's 100% cotton, and that is your black option. Also have the grey. That's been the most popular so far. I shan't get it all out, but just to give you an idea. See, this could be backs of cushion covers. It could be bag linings. It could be jacket linings. You can make a shirt out of it. It's, it's that kind of quality. I think you'll be quite surprised when you get it home that you've only paid £8.99 um, for half a metre and the quality is, is really there. It's really good. So that's a grey, pale grey with a darker grey. Crossroads check. Dun, 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 dun. And, and then the red. So you could use this with your cushions, couldn't you? If you make, I'm making cushions for you. See, that'd go really well. Um, but that's your red option of your backing fabric. Again, 208 centimetres wide, almost three metres in width and half a metre in length. All the more they come joined together. 
then we have the green. There you go. That's nice as well, isn't it? Do you know, that's a really, if you're making cushion covers out of those, I reckon you could do all eight with a strip of fabric like this. You could do loads with it. And the affordable way, it's only £8.99. And then finally, aqua. And, uh, sorry, 280 wide, half a metre in width. Now, anything that you'd like to order, um, there's two ways you can do that. You can go to our website and order that way. Um, check out your basket, 3.95 postage, and that's all day long. So when you come back again, we're not going to charge you any more postage, just for the day. Um, or you can go to the phone lines, which is a UK-based phone line, uh, which is 0800 001 4433. And you'll have some very nice people on the end of the phone there to help you out with your purchase. Right, if you, if you like your Alice in Glass panels, we do have some half metres of Alice in Glass fabric on the website as well, actually. Uh, we don't have the Mega Bundle, which has been really popular. Um, where are we? We've got all of these, you see. I shan't go through all of them because we are almost out of time here. So, the Mega Bundle's all sold out, so we have this print and we've got all of those different colour options available for you. I think that would go beautifully with this one. So, if you wanted to order that mustard colour, it is LHWU36. So, that's, that's the one I think would go really well with that. It does actually, doesn't it go really well? I really like that. Lovely. They all would really, but I just think when you when you put a colour like this next to it, you're automatically drawn to matching colours. It really picks them out, so that's a little bit unusual. Um, so that's the Sun Prince, which is six pounds ninety nine for half a metre. Then we have. Whoops. Let's have a look at these ones. So a slightly different design. These look like they've been hand stitched. You can see a bit better on this one, I think. Oh, that's a nice one. Let's go for that one with your panel this time. Um, so this is EKWU89. See that? You look here. Oh, you look there, don't you? Immediately drawn to the green. It really does work. So that's a pretty one. And then maybe, see that shot at us? And then you could maybe have a blue on the outside to pick these bits up as well. I've only got nine metres of that one left. And again, have a look on the website for all of your different colour options in these prints. And then here, we've got a cross stitch going on. So again, there's blues and pinks, bright pinks, oranges. What should we go for this time? Oh, got to be that one. Um, even the white, that's quite subtle. It's got a pale pink. That's called unicorn. And oh, no, no, no. Oh, look. Grey with the grey. That go. Oh, yes. I've got oohs in my ear again. Ooh. And the, oh, mind you, I'm just going for the same as I did before, aren't I? So you could have the teal in the middle and then the grey for your border. Go with those ones. Or teal with that one. So if you want to go for the teal, that's OZWU89. And then may, maybe, maybe let's, let's rebel. Let's go blue. Kind of like that. But again, all those different colour options for your sun prints are on the website. And these are by the half metre. So again, they come joined up if you ordered more than one. And you've got 112 centimetres in width. So that's the size that you're going to order. So you can make a nice little border and cushion back out of those. OK. Now, if you've got any bits and bobs left over, you don't throw them away. But if you're not sure what to do with them, how about going for your early bird, which is our scrap crazy creative grid templates. Over half of the stock sold out of those. Oh, trying to keep tidy. It's not working, is it? These are there. There are four of them. And this is the design that you can make with them. 
You don't have to have the triangle bit in there. If you didn't want to, you could just go for something like that. So what I like about this is that it's a great way of using up your scraps, but it keeps you organised with it. So by having them all the same shape, it's not so much a, a random throwing bits of scraps together, but they are using very small pieces. So again, you've got your triangle here. Remember with creative grids, there will be one of these pieces that has a QR code on it. Um, Oh, am I doing that upside down? I am. And that will take you through to a video with, um, <laughs> with instructions on there as well. We're done with the other one. Oh, there we are. So you have a video on the Creative Grids YouTube channel. You can have a look on that anyway. You don't have to have subscribed or be a member or anything like that. Um, so you can quite happily go and have a look on the, it's not right, is it? Um, on the channel. Here it is. Um, if you wanted to, or of course, have a look on their Pinterest page. Or you could just use the QR code. That takes you directly to the uh, Creative Grid YouTube channel. And you've got instructions on there as well. So you go there, you go there, you go there, there. Now, when we're talking about colours, and maybe you wanted to add some really lovely, bold, coloured Borders, echo quilting, straight line quilting. How about going for, for some lovely coloured thread? Uh, these are Tula Pink and she has been working in, um, in collaboration, if that's, that's the right word, with, uh, with Aurifil. So again, Aurifil brings you the quality, Tula Pink brings you the colours. And these are variegated, so they're kind of space dyed, so they change from one colour to another. 10 50 weight spools, all in fabulously bright colours. And any one of them, you could just pick out, and again, they will go with the colours that you have in here as well. I've got 200 metres on each spool of those, and again, you've got the 10 of those for £33.99. And, and Aurifil, of course, one of the preferred brands that a lot of quilters like to use. 50 weight of thread is going to be the one that you use for most of your projects. So we've had a good morning this morning, haven't we? Thank you to Delphine, who's going to be back with us again um, next Monday. And in fact, I shan't be back again until next Monday as well. But we've got an extended day next Monday. It's going to be four hours long and five hours long. Only for the one day, we've got five hours live. We've got new things for you. So we've got some launches, we've got books. I'm hoping to have a new panel to you by then as well. And Delphine's going to come in with something new and we're going to have some special offers. And even, I think, signed photos too. I think. So that's next Monday. I'll see you again then. Um, but of course, we're here for four hours every day now. So should we have a quick look at what's coming up tomorrow morning? At nine o'clock, we have dressmaking tools and fabrics. We've got a, a dial and jacket with Sarah Bolam at nine o'clock. Is Sarah actually coming in? We've got another guest in. Oh, not coming in. But she has kindly made a video for us. At ten o'clock, kindly made a video. Not, <laughs> not kind of. Kind of made a video, I think kind of thing. She kindly made a video for us, so that's at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Motor fabrics at, uh, at 10 o'clock, sorry. And at 11 o'clock, we've got the El Elna 780 and 680 sewing machine. I love that 780, it's my best one. Um, and at 12 o'clock, um, that's the repeat of Tilda Makes with Delphine, that was one of the, the shows that was on um, earlier on this morning. So again, anything else that you, you like to order, that you need, or you just fancy a perusal then uh, take a look on our website on sewingstreet.com um, if you want to get in touch with us or shop with us there you go sewingstreet.com or you can order on the phone lines um, if you want to send us an email at any point then do feel free remember you send your questions through for surgery next week and um, you can message the studio on sewingstreet.com um, just read through some more of your, your messages um, diane's had a bomb to web incident she she used toothpaste, not on her teeth, on her iron. Um, she used toothpaste and her iron's never been cleaner. Um, Debbie says, as you're trying to avoid using paper for wrapping, can you please have all of our parcels wrapped in fabric? No. Nah. Um, 
Hi, Debbie says, Pam just finished a cushion cover. Nobody gave me a bag of scrap material. Amongst it was a kit, we would call it now, dressed in plate, printed on Rose and Hubble. That is beautiful. What a lovely cushion cover. Thank you. Uh, June says, hi, Debbie. Woohoo, she said. She's doing a steam train impersonation. Just tried the paracetamol trick on my iron, which had black areas, and it worked. Thank you very much. Don't need to worry about ironing light fabric anymore. I shall pass that on to Delphine. Delphine is the top tip lady of the day today. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the last four hours and again from now on we are going to be live for four hours every single day so it's lovely to have your company on these uh, wonderful sewing mornings that we bring you seven days a week here from Sewing Street. That's it from us live now. We do have another hour of sewing before we pass over to our sister channel which is uh, Jewelry Maker so maybe stick around after the next hour and um, pick up a new skill or maybe a new hobby for you. Um, I'll see you again bright and early next Monday at eight o'clock. It's been lovely to have your company this morning. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.